Oh God, here we are again. It's recording hey. time. Whoa. Pre-record land. Happy and Easter hammers. and hammer time. Bam, bam, it is hammer bam. time. It's like with the yeah. Jesus man because it's Easter. Well, that was a great segue. Yeah, there, there, there you go. <laughs> God damn demonetized uh <laughs> well i mean you know i mean that uh, hey it's in the it's in the book you know like we're not making it up yeah uh well uh I, I well it's pretty much easter right now when you're listening to this so happy egg yeah. day bunny easter man day uh hope there's eggs everywhere or something i'll be in austria right now in the mountains so this might be the last time you hear of me because i might be dead <laughs> austria is basically germany's cousin pretty much yeah i don't think I'll, i will need to talk english over there <laughs> i think they will yeah, understand probably not. The although i mean i i had no trouble in austria like speaking english because every single person i talked to spoke english <laughs> yeah Seems to be pretty easy in Europe in general to find someone who at least talks a little bit of English. It's kind of funny. Yeah, I mean, kind of you know, I think it's, I don't know, maybe it's like a business language thing. It's like, hey, you might want to learn English just in case, in case you want to do any international business because this country is not, mm -hmm. not gigantic. <laughs> well, well, well. I have no ideas. English is, you know, it's fine, I guess. It's been doing very well for me. I've been talking it so much. It's, uh, it's, uh, I don't know. My brain failed me. There was something there. But uh, anyway. Uh, you gave away the secret. This has all been ESL lessons for metal. Oh, my God. <laughs> oh, man. Well, today we continue our Vaughn. Speaking of the English. Uh, the, oh, oh, good. Yeah, you're right. There Speaking you of the English. Uh, uh, well, I guess it's the final... Cur well, currently the final instance iteration entry of the Kingsman universe. Yeah, well, but I guess unless we're counting Argyle. <laughs> uh, oh yeah. You you told me about it. I, I still have not That's... seen that post credit sequence, and oh. I don't know if I ever will. I'm not sure if I'm gonna I mean, watch that movie. It's not either. worth it. Who knows if they even make some uh, some more because that movie didn't do very well from uh, what I understand. So. Hmm. Oh well, tough titties. Uh. Talk about not doing well. This movie didn't do well either, as far as I know. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I don't believe so, no. I think a lot of people like that movie. Uh, I just had a quick gander over at IMDb and see what people were, were talking about. And uh, I don't know, like the highest I've seen was probably like a six or something. Uh, actually, yeah, I, I still I have mean, the website well, open. Wait, we have an eight, we have a nine. Okay. I mean, despite the fact that I, I actually, I guess, spoiler alerts, I quite like this movie. I'd still probably give it like a six. <laughs> like, I, I think it's, I think it's good, and it's, above, I think, above average in that it tells some cool th stories about war and fatherhood that I, I wasn't really expecting. And um, yeah, and but at the same time, it's, it's got very poor visual effects, and it's structured very oddly at times. Mm-hmm. Uh, I don't even know how I would rate this one, to be honest. I have a hard time figuring out what is even what, what are they trying to do with this movie. It's a weird movie. This movie was very confusing in parts. Oh, yeah, it is weird. I'll give you that. Especially it's tonally, it's like all over the place. Uh, yeah, I feel like it, I, I don't uh, think it. I don't think it. Um, it manages to harmonize its tones quite as well as the first one did, which. Uh, I think what is kind of, I mean, it was almost in the opposite direction. We were saying that about Golden Circle, that it seems to get too wacky. Whereas this one, um, this one, I think, tilted so far into serious land at times. And I think in some of the stronger scenes that it made the more ridiculous stuff that happens stand out a little bit more than maybe it would have otherwise. Yeah, that's probably a good point. But we'll get to the Rasputin fight. <laughs> That's, yeah, we shall, we, we, we shall, uh, but yeah, I, I don't know, are we just gonna go from the beginning, uh, I, I, I guess we could do that, uh, and then we can just jump wherever we want to, really, uh, yeah, sure, but, I mean, the, the start is pretty straightforward, we got Mr. Orlando over here, uh, I say over here, like, people have the movie open right now, <laughs> trying yeah. to figure out where they are, uh, we get Mr. Orlando, which is going to be a 
main protagonist uh, for the movie. And uh, as soon as I click this button here, there you go. Uh, and I, I think they're, the, the, yeah, they're, they're visiting like a concentration camp kind of dealio and they have Red Cross supplies for them. Well, I think I think it's actually just a base that's um, I, for I forget what the name of this war would be, but it was some of the the English Empire operate or the British Empire operations during the late eighteen hundreds in South Africa, I believe. I'm pretty sure they specifically call it concentration camp. Do they? I'm pretty oh, wow. sure. I thought I, I thought I thought it was just a base where they were going to uh, drop supplies off because he was like a former. You know what? Yeah. I got subtitles, so I can so check. Man. Uh, Let's see. These concentration camps are the reason we're winning this war. That's that's what it says word for word here. Oh, oh fair enough. Yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, that the the it's it's a pretty straightforward scene. Like, uh, Orlando is here, Conrad is here, which is his child, uh, his son, and the the mother, which I forgot. Oh, Emily. Emily is her, uh, her name. Uh, she just says yeah. something to to Conrad like, "Oh, don't forget that all men are supposed to be equal, and the leader leads that way, and stuff like that." And when she said it was like, "You're gonna die in two seconds," and then she gets yeah. shot. <laughs> and, yeah, I, I did. I think that was difficult to not see coming, yeah. especially like c considering the fact that you know that they're starting the movie this early on for a reason, and it's probably not just gonna be. To show the the cool time that this kid went to a concentration camp, <laughs> yeah, uh, because uh, yeah, Conrad in this scene is is very young. He's like four or five or something. Like he's he's a little little kid. Yeah, he's a little little clown boy, little little boy child. <laughs> like a little clown boy, <laughs> kills me. Deep meme. Yeah. Totally. Um... <laughs> But yeah, because someone, they're, they're getting attacked. Uh, she gets shot, uh, I think, in, in the back chest area. And mm -hmm. uh, Orlando is getting shot in the leg. Because and, and his leg gets uh, flamed up. Yeah, and this is an injury that um, I, I maybe think they should have written out of the movie. Considering <laughs> how they solve it is strange. And they do just resolve it and it's like, okay, it's I fixed I think strange now. is an understatement. Uh, yeah, we'll, we'll get there. But, there's some but voodoo it, it magic does, ahead, basically. It, it uh, gives you the reason why Orlando isn't the one that's like taking the reins in the impending possible World War One situation that's happening mm -hmm. uh, in in the main timeline of the story. And with, with her dying breath, she tells Orlando, "Don't let go, let our son see another war." And it's like, okay, I won't do. I tried to not do that. And th that's basically it. That's, uh, that's uh, the baseline, basically. Uh, and oh, uh, I, think also... that, go ahead. I think that that, that line, and actually, um, I, I guess I can, we can go into it as we get into more of their mentalities and characterization around that concept, but the idea of the thing that I want you to do is make it so that this child will never see war, mm -hmm. it's, it becomes increasingly difficult to promise that. Yeah. <laughs> And I think, yeah, we'll come back to that because I have thoughts, but sorry, keep going. That's not, that's, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, oh, yeah, I just mentioned we got Shola, who's their, uh, I know, butler, main butler, servant, assistant, He's man. the Merlin, the Merlin character. Of basically, this yeah. That's ba he's basically the Merlin. Uh, and then we have a time skip uh, for uh, 12 years. We're now 12 years in the future. And uh, we see that he's he's just flying the planes and stuff and getting a little bit of training. Uh... Yeah, uh, clearly Conrad is a man of many skills because we see him just sort of casually flying a plane as the first yeah. thing that happens with him in an era where not a lot of people will even have been in a plane, never no. mind flown one. Um... But yeah, the, the, we see that he's doing like some kind of things, and there's like a little bit of conflict going on. It's like, hey, you you just not allowed him. You didn't allow him to go to Russia or something. And it's like, yeah, but I need him here so I can look out for him because Daddy wants to protect him at all costs because he made this promise to his wife when she was dying, and obviously it's getting quite restrictive while 
the boy is getting older because he's becoming of age. He's, I think he's 18 or 19 now. I think he gets, well, he becomes. Yeah, he's a, he turns 18 during the movie. Oh, okay. Right, right, right. Yeah. So he, right. He's 17 in this first scene, but like elderly 17, yeah. like he's, he's almost 18. Because he was like, I want to see the world and stuff and also do the things. And he's like, no, nah, I need to protect you because otherwise your mom's going to be angry in, in the heavens. Yeah. And I mean, if it's your your dying wife's last request, you can also kind of understand oh, yeah, why yeah. Orlando would be taking this seriously. Like, For sure. For he's sure. like, no, I, I can't let you. I can't let you go to places where war might be happening or where I can't watch over you because... If you get killed by a bullet ever, your mother's soul is going to be angry at mine forever. Yeah. Uh, we also get introduced to Polly, which is uh, which he calls her a nanny. So I guess she's just one of the the maids, basically, uh, of the estate. The head, the head maid. Is that even the term you use? I don't know. Yeah. Well, I mean, I, I guess yeah. Right. It would be the she's the senior house service person but it also seems that in addition to shola who we see get a little bit of an action scene in the in the previous scene like the the flashback mm -hmm. um he's also working there and it it makes me think that probably a lot of the people working at this mansion are are like this estate it's like a, a lordly estate he's a he's mm -hmm. a duke i believe and I, I think that it it would be interesting to think that just most of the people there are interesting characters that he's picked up through his like military operations. And mm -hmm. because she's like off the bat, you find out that she's a very skilled marksman because oh, uh, yeah. yeah, she does a thing. <laughs> oh, yeah. Uh, she just happened on screen because they do some hand to hand combat. And uh I mean, they're fighting with knives fighting with knives to... those yeah. savages how dare they because polly comes in and shoots off the uh, shoots the the one training knife uh off of uh, shola and it's like you know go we'd fight with these now you don't need these anymore which i found this is like a very silly thing to say because you should probably yeah, still I mean, have knife combat experience <laughs> well i mean yeah especially when you you consider what happens later yep <laughs> Yeah, I even put it in my notes like this is how you fight these days and he was like oh that's gonna be that's gonna be a thing later for sure <laughs> those oh the, the setups yes. in this movie are not very subtle uh <laughs> like, not no, at all no. especially on a second view and you see them coming a mile away oh no just the way they set them i was like oh we fight like this now or a little bit earlier when polly talks to um talks to another conrad to orlando it's like oh having your son so close is be be your weakness i was like okay i see what we're doing i got your movie <laughs> i i understand um but it's also time to get him his first suit mind you this is just actually a normal suit the kings yeah, the kingsmen suit. don't exist yet <laughs> this is a, this is the prequel movie this is where the the the, the king's men will be founded uh, at the end basically in case that wasn't one of clear. these characters may be the titular king's man yeah and uh he's getting the suits like oh whatever helps in pursuit but i need maybe like a shooting suit or whatever because he's like come on man i'm about to be an adult i want to go out i want to have some fun i want to see the world please and i hear like, the 20s are going to be roaring yeah <laughs> And and then he has, has like has like this weird speech about their ancestors, and I just didn't understand why he told him all that. Because uh, he's like, sooner or later you're going to have to let me enjoy it. That's what uh, Conrad says, even if you know, even if you don't want to. And then he starts saying, you know, Conrad, our ancestors, they were terrible people. They robbed, lied, pillaged, and killed until one day they found themselves noblemen. But that no nobility never came from chivalry. chivalry. It came from being tough and ruthless. Back then, to be called a gentleman would have been a death sentence, not the mark of honor it is today. We are Oxfords, not rogues, which is obviously a thing from yeah. the movies. But I was like, he just wanted to, he just wants to go out somewhere. I, I don't really see the connection between this, what he said, what I just read out to him just wanting to go out. Maybe I'm just stupid. Maybe you can explain it to me. I, I think it's uh, like, it is a little bit awkwardly written. I don't I'll say that much, but I think that this speech was mostly to let um, let Conrad know that at least from Orlando's perspective, his his family has an ability to 
to kill that's maybe abnormal mm -hmm. like <laughs> and that um that it, perhaps there's a side of conrad that his adventurous spirit will eventually lead him to realizing that about himself and okay. will lead him to want to go to war and will lead him to get killed in a war which is precisely what the mother didn't want to have happen right I think there was a little bit of like, okay, well, we got to make sure we talk about how like the the royals are the bad guys apparently. Oh, they they do that. They also make it really clear that war is bad. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> quite uh, significantly. Uh. Uh. All oh, right. Yeah. Then they just uh, they they go outside and we got Kitchener, which is the general of the like the I don't know what what is actual rank is uh he's like a big boy general that has like a lot of yeah military he's a, power um, he's a decorated officer in the yeah. british military uh and he's basically like hey i will need a small favor orlando homie boy and he's like all righty you know what uh, conrad uh we're gonna need that shooting suit after all because we go into germany yes yeah because we go and go visit Franz Ferdinand, the 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 the, the boy. Wait, is it it's the Archduke? The Archduke. Uh, uh, da, 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 da. Oh, we also learn uh, like he, he has like the the other guy that's here. Um, Mon, 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 Mon shit, wait, I forgot to write his name down here. Mor Morton, Morton was his name. Yeah. Uh. Like, oh, there's a the construction going crazy right now. Sorry, yeah, I, I had to do a really fast mute on that one. <laughs> <I was> like, <laughs> uh, right, so uh, and he just talks to him. It's like, oh, what do you want to do? Or, no, oh, I want to be a grenadier. It's like, well, contact me. I'll see what I can do. Uh, also, this is already where I knew... what Orlando wanted to hear. <laughs> yeah. Also, at this point, it was always like, oh, it's either Kitchener or Morton that's going to be the bad guy. One of the two. <laughs> was, not really see, i didn't yeah. necessarily uh, peg that although you would have been correct oh man the scraping <laughs> they're, going, they're going hard if people are gonna not like this episode <laughs> <laughs> they'll they'll be fine they'll be fine um but yeah they're going to they're making their way to germany and that's that's that for now and now we go to we follow we, we follow rasputin uh, to the big mountain where the big evil man is residing at some point. Uh, Who is, as of now, mysterious. Yeah, he's very mysterious. He's like in the shadows and everything because we don't want to show Kinda who like, he uh, is. Dr. Claw from Inspector Gadget. Like you, you only really see like the back of him. <laughs> right, right. I haven't thought about that in a while. Um... But yeah, he, he's like he's like here. I bought you a gift with your favorite goat in it. Thank you, please. And he's like, whatever. Have a seat. My dear Angus. My dear Angus. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, well, basically, he doesn't care. He just wants to sit down, and he he basically wants all these people to act like animals because animals never let him down. And I was like, he's going to get killed because of an animal. 100%. <laughs> Especially when we go through the movie and he's, he's just cruel to the enemies, uh, to the yeah, uh, animals. I, mean, I was like, oh, you're yeah, going to... He goes out of his way to not treat those goats well. Yeah. Uh... Yeah, he basically just wants them to be uh, in line do do all the shit they they he needs to be done and then they give some rings with different animals on them like some of them have a hound a, tor a tortoise uh and Rasputin a... gets the tortoise yeah and he's like, the one <laughs> he's like why must i be turtle i, I should be bear yeah. big powerful bear <laughs> <laughs> and then and they all Reed just Tiffin's playing um Rasputin too of uh house of the dragon fame oh okay nice see i don't Auto even know that's how you can tell. I'm just awful with uh, with actors. I didn't even notice. <laughs> yeah, he's Otto Hightower, and uh, he he's in a bunch of stuff too. He was the lizard in um, Amazing Spider-Man. Oh, okay. The first one. Also, um, did you ever see that Keanu Reeves movie where he's an American football player? Uh, I don't think so. The replacements. No. The replacements. Yeah, mm -hmm. he's the kicker. He's like a soccer player that, they, or sorry, and a, and a European football player who they get to be the the kicker for the the American football team just because he's really good at kicking. That's the first thing I remember seeing. Wow. Good actor, though. Yeah, yeah, for sure. 
Uh, but yeah, they kind of bicker around. It's like, I want that animal. It's like, well, take it. Me, 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 me. And uh, the, the boss man is like, shut up. And then he slashes the throats. Uh, the, the throats? Goats? The goat's throat. The goat's. Uh, yeah, throat of the goat. It's like, don't mistake, don't mistake me fondness for weakness. <laughs> don't mistake me fondness for weakness. <laughs> you know, it's, it's a really great accent. Like, it's an ultra heavy Scottish yeah, accent. Yeah, it's kind of funny, actually. Like the, the, the accent is a bit funny to me. Not in a bad way. I just kind of find it amusing. Um, but yeah, he's he's evil. In case you couldn't tell, he, he's uh, he's. Like... Oh yeah, no, it's super <laughs> clear he's evil. Like that, <laughs> that part's not in question. Um, oh, also those rings have like a, like a cyanide pill in in there or a tablet rather. It's a bit wide for a pill, I would say. Would you say still call it a pill if it's like yeah. this wide? Okay. Tablet. Yeah. And capsule maybe. No, no, it's not a capsule because those are the chambered ones, but. It's like a dissolving, like, you know, like a, oh, what are the words for, man, Alka-Seltzers. Yeah. Yeah, it's like an Alka-Seltzer thing, but like small. It sounds smart, so I believe you. <laughs> yeah. Sublingual tablets. Um, and yeah, no, the, ba the guy who was dubbed the bear, he's like, yo, go to Ferdinand and deal with him so war can start. They also call him the shepherd. Uh, and if you are aware of how the whole assassination went down, you basically know what happens here because it's very, yeah. very similar. But they changed it in a really weird way. <laughs> well, I mean, I think they did that because they created a fair amount of tension in that first scene, like where, where they're in the car together. Because like it was actually really funny seeing it with Rex Ray Girl because she is uh, let's say she's not a, not a military history person like mm -hmm. she doesn't don't really care about like World War One World War Two I mean she cares that they happened don't get me wrong like she's not inhuman but oh, she yeah, doesn't yeah. have like an interest in the specific she's just like yeah I get it people yeah, yeah. fight people die there's one no specific interest. thing where where I, I was just wondering why they changed the way that makes it makes them kind of look like a dumbass. And just lucky instead of being like calculated. But we we'll get there in a yeah, second. Yeah, I mean, to be fair, yeah, that I, I do do think they probably could have made the assassin seem a little bit better than just lucking out. But well, that's a I, weird I, part. It was like like in real life, the guy who failed, he was like, "Oh, let me find a new way to do it," and he found a new position, and then he mm -hmm. then he uh, went to that uh, little food shop there. Uh, but yeah, yeah, just just to uh, catch everybody up, uh, he tries to throw a bomb. Uh, some he fails because conrad just kind of knocks it away with the umbrella yeah, um, yeah pretty slick yeah but the way it, uh, it, it happens is like uh, actually kind of similar to real life because in real life uh, someone threw a bomb and it just bounced off of the car below the car behind them and he just kind of knocks it away below the car behind them so so huh. it's very similar uh, there's a lot of similarities that they actually took even down yeah, to the oh. to the name of the food shop he uh, he is in Oh really? Yeah. Yeah, because the the real close. the real life name of the food shop is Schiller Delicatessen, and uh, you can see like a little sign behind him when he's sitting there, and it just says Schiller's something something. So that's ah. kind of the little nod there. Well then. Yeah, and, and, but and, I think though the the thing I was talking about with the tension is like I'm sitting there when they're all in the car together, like oh something's oh, yeah, gonna yeah. go down. And X Ray Girl's just like, why do you seem so excited? <laughs> 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 and I was like, um. Because, you know, they're, they're in the car with Archduke Franz Ferdinand. It's 1911. Yeah. <laughs> like, I'm just like, uh, you, you're picking up what I'm putting down, honey? Or... <laughs> no, she didn't, really. Oh, okay. But yeah, oh, wait, uh... hold on. Was it 19? No, it wasn't 1911. 1914? 14, right? I, I actually need to look this up now. Otherwise, I'm going to... Wait, wait what, what was your question exactly? No, I'm confused. The assassination of Archduke Franz Ferdinand. Uh, I think it was... 14 yeah yeah i think yeah it was 14 yeah it was right. the, the war started 14 right so yeah i think in my head i yeah. was thinking of 1914 as the end of the war and then I, I estimated the rough length of the war and it came out as 1911 but i immediately knew i was incorrect and and had to fact check myself <laughs> yeah. sorry I, I was up very early this morning <laughs> oh it's fine I, I, I need to check stuff as well i mean my school days weren't yesterday as well so it's been a while yeah, I know. It's just I'm in the army. If I get too many major things wrong about military history, I'm gonna be expelled or something. <laughs> <laughs> whatever, whatever the army equivalent of being suspended from school is. Yeah, but yeah, the, he he ends up actually killing the two and then gets captured. Um, 
But yeah, uh, oh, in between the two assassination attempts, they just kind of sit uh, where he has his, where uh, Ferdinand has his little little speech that was uh, that he was doing, and so it's like, uh, you need to, I need to get you home where I can protect you. Oh, I'm talking about uh, the two main protagonists, yeah. Conrad and Orlando. It's like, I need to get you home where you protect you. It's like, I protected you. I don't need protection, and. Orlando was it as him, you're just a little boy child and you don't know what men are capable of. And then he yeah, just answers and... with, you think seeing my mom die wasn't a good intro? It's like, oh, yeah. <laughs> I mean, yeah, that's, like he got him there, I think. He's like, yeah, well, I mean, you know, I love that my mom might have told you to keep me away from war and pain and death. But mm -hmm. at the same time, like, I know that I have the ability to help. Yeah. And I almost got through without a scraping. <clears throat> Um, but yeah, uh, now they're just uh, on their way back, basically. I mean, that's 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 basically uh, what is happening. Um, let's see. Uh, ba -ba 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 -ba. Ah, where's my I? There we go. We, we going from after the explosion or? Oh yeah, they're just sitting in the in in the. That's where they're sitting in in the train on the way back. Yeah, yeah. and then they see, yeah they start talking about about yeah like the oh yeah that that's where the conversation we're talking about happens yes yeah and Sorry, then it, I can't see I can't see the stuff that Metal's looking at right now so yeah 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 from memory. Uh, but they're basically doing like the whole start of World War One. I. I was like, don't do it. It's like, oh, but I will. And uh, there's actually a tidbit, I, like an insane thing. I actually never knew that that the three big boys in World War One were cousins. Cousins, yeah. That's I. I, I, mean, I don't remember know, that being ever told in school because that's crazy. <laughs> the, well, I think the thing that makes it less crazy is when you think about how royals married each other off like, oh, to create actually, alliances and point, things. Yeah. So it's like, well, ultimately, it was like the chances of them not being cousins are pretty slim. That's actually like, true. Yeah. <laughs> That's just, I just don't recall that, that I've been taught in school, or maybe it was just a little side note. I mean, oh, yeah, no, oh. I, I definitely didn't know Tsar Alexander was like there, like in the yeah. same family. I think I might have heard that Kaiser Wilhelm and, um, oh man, now I'm forgetting the king's name, King Philip? George. George, yeah, King George. Um, wait, Philip, who's if Philip? Was, um, that was Queen Elizabeth's husband, wasn't it? Mm -hmm. That's what I'm thinking, right? Yeah, okay, so mm -hmm. I was thinking Prince Philip. But yeah, so we, I, I think I did hear about Kaiser Wilhelm and King George being cousins at some point, but I don't remember Tsar Nicholas from Russia being part of that equation at all, ever, because that always seemed like a totally different story. That was in the Eastern Europe history books, not the, <laughs> not the Western Europe ones. That's kind of funny. But you figure, hey, I mean, if they're that intimately tied, why not have that be one book? School. Yeah. Uh, it's just kind of funny, uh, like uh, like the the Tsar, King George, and uh, so on. They're all three uh, 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 acted by the same person. That's kind of fun. Yeah. Um, so they're basically doing the beginning of World War One, but uh, obviously the 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 difference is it's all been uh, all been led or stirred on by the evil men in the background. Uh, yeah, yeah, but because, uh, the because same see... events from history happened. It's just we didn't know there was an evil organization. Like basically, Spectre, the Kingsman's universe version of like the organization mm -hmm. Spectre from the Bond films. It's that was the thing starting it actually. <laughs> yeah, because uh, we we see obviously Rasputin. He is uh, he's with the evil men. We see the other dr German guy. He's he's with the with the. <clears throat> with the guy and everything so yeah uh there's your like oh maybe you should just ignore what they just told you and he was pretty mean to you as a child and i was like yeah let's do war because mean <laughs> but yeah uh so yeah, they that's... made fun of your hand <laughs> <laughs> of your deformity I'm actually, surpri I, I, <laughs> I'm actually surprised they made them talk English with an accent instead of just German and Russian. I think it would have been fun. Yeah, I mean, yeah. I always, I always I, prefer that. I guess personally. just for the the type of movie they're going for, being like a popcorn action yeah. blockbuster, they figure like people will just want to hear the the English. They want to have to do reading, but you know, also it it usually does go better if you if you just use the languages they're actually speaking in. 
right. Shogun's actually doing pretty well with that, actually. Although there is one thing that's a bit odd because I think the Japanese woman who's translating the British dude, they speak in English together, but I think they are both to be speaking in Portuguese together because that's the language that okay. they both know. And yeah, maybe not 100% on that, but I, I did get through the four existing episodes of Shogun and they, they do speak Japanese and Portuguese in it a lot. It's just, it seems like whenever the main guy's talking, he's pretty much always talking in English. Mm -hmm. Well, you probably heard your thoughts about that last week already, because... I'm, oh, yeah, yeah, this I'm, one's in the future. Yeah, with the oh, future, oh! Um, so, yeah, the, the, the war started. We jump by two years. The war is in full effect. They're going all, all crazy, man. There's... Because the, the, the evil man, the evil Scotsman was like, oh, we thought it was going to take two years, but they were going so hard with all this war. They're like so into it. Uh, we can already do the next step of our plan. Yeah. And uh, it's basically like, hey, uh, they've been, we want to just get rid of all the English because they've been fucking around with the Scots this whole time. So we want to eradicate the English, which means we need to get the Russians out of the war. So, and uh, yeah, we I think we know how that happens. <laughs> uh, Damn commies! <laughs> Darn you! But yeah, uh, Conrad wants to join the war after the two years because they're looking for uh, uh, what's the? There's a specific word when they look for people for volunteers in war. Yeah, rec recruiting. recruiting. I think there was even another one that I was looking for um conscription that's the that, one yeah so cons yeah conscription is um a draft so that's when you oh. involuntarily send people to war or like hey you're going you don't have a choice whereas um recruitment would be getting people to join voluntarily right okay okay now uh, I've got dogs freaking out about the construction. <laughs> <laughs> it's like all kinds of things happening on your end. Yeah, if, if you ever just need to vamp for a moment because I'm not saying anything, assume I'm muted because it's not worth me talking at the particular moment. <laughs> no, it's all good. It's all good. Uh, but yeah, Connor wants to join in because uh, I want to fight for my country as well because everyone was super hyped for war back in the day. Uh, like, legit. Like, I'm not even... It's not a meme. Yeah. Like, yeah. if you're not aware, like be like really hyped to go to war i mean modern conflict wasn't um public knowledge at the time yes like the the realities of it it was everyone thought that they'd be on a battlefield with their swords and everything and they'd get to use guns but it would just kind of be like out using swords and stuff mm. and they'd have they'd get some honor and they'd come home heroes but yeah world yeah. war one the technology did make a really big difference as far as how that was conducted oh yeah i mean it Go watch All Quiet on the Western Front if you want to have a, yep. a specific story about that because that shit is, uh, is a good movie. Yeah, I'm good. Uh, but yeah, he, uh, uh, Conor, uh, not Conrad, Orlando, saying, like, here, I have a Victorian cross. It's like, whoa, you have one? It's like, yeah, yeah. but I killed people, but then I got sad because uh, war is bad and I didn't think I have any right to take their land. And so and I, we do get we get a little flashback there where yeah, you yeah. see him in in like POV doing Kingsman style stuff. Yeah, uh, like with like a sword and a pistol. Yeah, he's doing like some fighting, and it's like I actually don't want to kill people anymore. And uh, he took up a stretcher instead instead of killing people, he wanted to save people. I um, mean, yeah, I'm an army medic. I guess I understand that. But, yeah. Uh, I guess like being an army medic, unless you're Desmond Doss from, uh, he was in, like he's from real life, but Hacksaw Ridge was the movie about him, and uh, he was a conscientious objector who refused oh, to yeah. fire a gun. I remember that was, movie. Like, yeah, it's a good movie. They they actually showed it to my unit before it came out. Oh really? <laughs> They're like, hey, yeah, it's like we're we've got this movie about an army medic, and I'm like, oh, okay, cool. They're like, it's Desmond Doss. I was like, oh, we all know about him, just because it's like a story we were told. You know, it's like it's like they tell us around the campfire about the conscientious objector who was in such good shape that he managed to be one of the best medics ever anyways, mm -hmm. <laughs> just by the fact that he didn't ever defend himself, which is, is wild to me. But um, but yeah, um, he was in a movie and it was Andrew Garfield. I was like, oh, it's fucking Spider-Man. Mm -hmm. I was Spino. like, this movie's directed by Mel Gibson. It was all kind of a surprise. <laughs> yeah, I liked a lot. Yeah. 
Um, yeah, uh, and then we see that some cousin writes Conrad and is basically like, yo, Rasputin is going kind of ham over here. He's uh, doing all kinds of shenanigans with the Tsar, making him to, to get him to drop out of the war by basically drugging his kid temporarily and uh, telling him that he needs to stop his war efforts to save him because, ah, uh, he has a premonition. Ah, uh, he's like all this Rasputin stuff. He was a wild person back in the day. <laughs> it was crazy. Yeah, yeah crazy guy who uh didn't wash a lot from what i understand yeah didn't bathe a lot did a lot of opium yeah uh i think dankadam made a video on him a while back that was a pretty good video not really I'm no more about him it's, really, it's fun stuff uh and yeah did, uh, yeah so he's he's doing all that thing and he's also been apparently drugging everybody with opioids uh like the wife and the tsar himself yeah Makes them impressionable. Yeah. Uh, and the thing about the addiction of opium is that you you would w keep wanting more of it. So, like, after the first couple doses, you don't really have to talk them into it. Like, they're going to be asking you for it. <laughs> yeah, fair point. Uh, but, yeah, he, he drugs the kid and goes, oh, you need to drop out the war to save your son's life. And he's like, okay. And then Rasputin does some voodoo magic and the son is fine. At this point, I thought he was just fucking around, like he didn't actually drug him. He's just it's kind of temporarily temporary. But uh, considering that he later, what he later does, I'm not even sure what the fuck his powers are. He's a, he's a weird man. He's a weird magic yeah, man so, in this film. Well, I mean, especially the the. I guess I guess we should talk about the leg now. Cause... Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> okay, so after after rasputin is um ushered away through like i guess it's a scene that we can go through after this but just know that rasputin is able to heal orlando's leg with with his tongue <laughs> sure. and it works yeah like for real yeah his tongue and then an ice bath like ice therapy which uh yeah scientifically i don't think ice therapy on an injury that is like multiple decades old is going to help you all that much <laughs> so i mean but i mean the only reason i mentioned that isn't to say like oh super unrealistic it's like no no, no they're implying he actually has magic yeah because <laughs> which it would be unrealistic though <laughs> i mean yeah but like what i don't mean medically unrealistic therefore they did it wrong i mean like no no, no we'd like he would need to be magical oh yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> we've crossed gotcha. the line into this must be fantasy not like madam webb's kind of medical inaccuracy where it's like no they just didn't do their homework they're they're trying to present this as if it's real yeah. Whereas yeah. I feel like the people in Kingsman know that Rasputin could not have done that. <laughs> hmm. Whereas I, I think that it's very possible the Madam Web writers don't think cardiac arrest is a big deal. Well, they don't. <laughs> yeah, I'm just saying that uh, I, I see a difference in the writer's intention. You see oh, yeah, I mean? yeah, like, yeah, I think, yeah. I think in Kingsman, they were like, yeah, no, no, this is the proof that he actually did have magic powers of sorts. I mean, he's also, kinda, time, he's also kind of he's also kind of superhuman power apparently. Like he, the way he well, grabs stuff, he's 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 a he's a crazy the, man. The weird thing that part is apparently true. How hard it was to kill Rasputin. Okay. So like, I mean, it was he was shot, stabbed, drowned, poisoned, and <laughs> right. like, it, like it it took a very long time for him to actually die. I think the drowning might have been what did it. Um, but yeah, and I, I thought that it was interesting that. What they they show in this movie is that it all happens in like one fight. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> and like it was all in one in one fight. They tried to do that all those things to him in that event, as opposed to it being like multiple attempts, multiple times to kill him that just didn't work. That's fun. I should have rewatched uh, Dan Kedas video on that because I forgot about that. That's true. Now that you mention it, I remember that. <laughs> uh. Yeah, they... I mean, it's why he—it's why he's so good to use as a villain and stuff. He was also the villain in the first Hellboy film. Oh, okay. God, I haven't seen that in, I don't know, probably when he oh, came out. Oh, it's great. Hell, Hellboy one is awesome, and I think Golden Circle is quite good as well. But the the first one, I think, really holds up. Wait, Hellboy has a Golden Circle movie as well. The, uh, Golden Army, Golden oh, Army. Okay. For Hellboy. <laughs> I was yeah. like, whoa, what are the what are the yeah, odds? Sorry, it was, they they both have a golden sequel. <laughs> Uh, uh, but yeah, he, he gets that info about uh, Rasputin doing all these shenanigans, and he brings that info to uh, to Kitchener, but doesn't tell his dad because his intention is, hey, you want to send this the, a special unit there to deal with Rasputin? I want to join. And he's just like, 
ah, uh, well, I made a promise. And then Orlando comes in because he obviously realized what is going on. And Tessin's yeah. like, nah, -uh, you won't join there. Uh, yeah, that's that's that. Um, let me see if I missed anything. No, we, we're straight to the ship. I thought there was something in between, but no, we're going straight yeah. to the ship, which gets blown up by a submarine. Mm -hmm. uh, we see that uh, Morton is like, oh, I'm a bit seasick. Let me go outside. And at this point, it was, yeah. I was positive. <laughs> it's like, oh, he's up to no good. <laughs> <laughs> he is, he's, 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 uh, uh I don't trust you, bye. Yeah, I think this is the point that I put together. I didn't, I didn't peg him as evil in the very first scene he was in, but it was here that I was like, okay. Well, in, the, in the very first scene, I, I wasn't sure if it's going to be Morton or Kitchener, but when he, when Kitchener got blown up and he just went outside, I was like, okay, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you're, you, you're an evil man. Um, but yeah, this is a submarine that sh shoots the ship. Before that, we get like another thing, it's like where Kitchener reads the wall losses, like. It's like five million just says, may God forgive me. By the way, this is a Charles Dance uh, Kitchener. Yeah. I should have probably mentioned that because he's awesome. <laughs> he is. I actually, I responded with a picture of him on a Twitter post today, which is very far in the past at this point. But mm -hmm. it was the, um, if the DC Universe cast new Batman actors, who do you think would be the perfect Alfred? Oh. I, was like, oh, I, don't, I was like, I don't think anyone could be better than Charles Dance. Yeah, that would be like sick. Playing a, an old wise Englishman. <laughs> That's always a good choice. Oh, like one who might be kind of tough and badass in his own way, too. Because that, I mean, that's that's how they're doing Alfred now, let's face it. Yes. Uh, Yeah, his ship gets blown up and Kitchener is no more. He got butta bing, butta boomed. Uh, rip Charles Dance. Rip Charles Dance. Uh, in the movie, in the movie. In real life, <laughs> live and real uh, but apparently he wrote one final letter to Orlando where he basically tells him, hey, Conrad still wants to fight uh, and you don't. Uh, I want to... Uh, wait, hang on. I think I... Wait, am I missing, mixing something up? Didn't Charles Dance wrote him, write him a letter? Oh, yeah, he just tells him, he's like, I'm going to respect your wishes uh, and I keep him out of harm's way as best as I can. Mm -hmm. uh, but he's like, he's a good lad. He wants to fight. He wants to do the right thing, uh, just so you understand. And Conrad yeah, is and actually getting really upset now uh, because he's uh, it's like, ah, you can't protect me forever. I'm getting older. It's not long, and then I'm uh, I'm going to be of age, and you can't do anything. Uh, and you can't protect me forever, so you can forget about the time you failed to protect mother. Mother was like, "Oh shit!" Yeah, which was uh, I think that was a little harsh. Yeah. To be fair, he goes like, "Oh, I'm I'm sorry. I didn't mean that. I was a bit. I was a yeah. bit no, I, I was just angry." But he's like, "Nah, it's fine. Come with me." And then we uh, go downstairs in the basement where king's man ish things are happening oh by the way we're 37 minutes into this movie now uh at this point i was actually kind of bored i'm not gonna lie i wrote you while i was watching it i was like this is i'm kind of bored <laughs> i need something to happen <laughs> uh i guess you have sounds happening so i'm just gonna oh yeah go sorry <laughs> <laughs> um Yeah, uh, wait, what was I saying? Oh, yeah, I thought it was kind of dragging on the movie for a while. I was like, what are we, what is, what's happening? I thought I was watching, like, a Kingsman movie where crazy stuff is going to happen. But so far, we didn't even get, like, a proper action scene or anything. Uh, it was just all... And, like, and as much as that, I think, structurally makes the movie weird, and, and again, I will say this movie is weird, mm. I, I, I did, I kind of liked that they took as much time as they did to set up the, the historical stage, because... I, I think that it's like World War One is such an important part of this movie that I think taking the time to sort of see the the cogs working behind the scenes with the with the fictionalized element of the evil organization, you know, sort of pulling the strings. I, I thought it was kind of interesting to see just how many 
moments of pride or like decisions where you don't want to call your cousin and talk through things or when you've been influenced something by someone who you trust so you've decided to then not trust people in your family even when millions of lives hang in the balance i i think that all that stuff was was kind of cool and i think that once we get to you know here like the the basement of the first kingsman headquarters mm. essentially I think that it's that the, that's an interesting length of time into the movie for it to start becoming a Kingsman movie for real, you know? Because like I guess all the only other thing we had was when he knocked the bomb away. Yeah, because like, he, he did it in a really like slick way that was kind of yeah, like yeah. something you'd see in a Kingsman movie. And then you get the little flashback scene, the POV one where Orlando's like going through his memories. But other than that, like, you could be forgiven for not even understanding why this is in the Kingsman franchise at all. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I just completely forgot what I was about to say. I had a thought, but it's I'm gone. Just about, oh, okay. Sorry about that. <laughs> uh, what we were on in the recap was um, that they were just showing him the basement. Oh, yeah. I, I know where we are. I just, my the thought I had is just, gone. well, maybe it'll come back. Uh, if not, I apologize. Happens to me all the time. I find if I'm often told what we were talking about, it gets me gets me back on the right track. Yeah, yeah, like yeah. Flipping record sometimes. Um. But anyway, they 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 are they are uh, going downstairs. And it's like Shola and Poppy. They're chilling down there for their briefing. Uh. And uh. Car's like, I don't I don't know what's happening. And she's like, Well, we have like a network of uh, all different nannies all around the world uh that can get get us informations and stuff and they basically figured out that while they captured the the bear guy from earlier uh Orlando actually paid him a visit and figured that he uh that he had a ring uh with an animal and a cyanide capsule in it as we already said and uh, they figured that out and they also had someone in Russia an, another nanny see that Rasputin in his drawer also had one of these rings so they have a little connection there so their plan now is to go and uh, deal with Rasputin basically and now Orlando uh, Conrad is in mm -hmm. and even though I didn't I didn't want to get you in here because I wanted to keep you safe you're gonna you're gonna come join us and kill Grigory Rasputin. Well, because they he realizes that some battles need to be fought so that mm -hmm. suffering can be spared. And I think that that's kind of that's kind of the moral of this movie when it comes to the war stuff. It's that as much as it might seem like the honorable thing to do is to not fight, some battles are worth fighting. And yeah. Like just thinking, hey, if we did this and then it stopped all of World War One in the context of us knowing history and knowing what World War One is, it's it's kind of neat to think, well, what if that mission did succeed? Maybe maybe there's plenty of times World War blank, like we put a number in there, could have happened, but brave men who like were able to do to fight the battle that needed to be fought at the perfect time mm. to stop that war from happening in the first place. And I think that that's it's a really interesting way to look at it. Look at even the need for a a constant standing espionage agency, like a like a security agency that works at an international level in order to protect your own country. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, that's that's it. Okay. <laughs> now they've started the hammering. No, oh, oh joy. Um... Yeah, they're making their way to to Russia on the big old train. Uh, the inside of that train, uh, well, it looks kind of bad because you can clearly see there's all green screen and the windows and everything. It looks kind of kind of ass. Not gonna lie. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, the special effects aren't great in this movie. And uh, yeah, they 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 got some invites to the party, and <laughs> their plan is basically, hey. Uh, Rasputin, he likes to eat, have a party, and he likes to diddle, and he really likes to diddle attractive young men, or, yeah, basically that, yeah, that's it. And the plan is, hey, you're gonna make him uh, go with you on in your room, and Poppy is gonna bake a cake with poison in it, you're gonna make him eat him, because he really likes sweet cake, 
So you're gonna make him eat this wheat cake, he's gonna get poisoned, and we're out of here. GG. And that's the plan. Yeah, and I mean, you know, could have worked. Yeah. Uh I was this uh kind of curious, like, oh, you let him do this thing? That seems like kinda dangerous. He just joined in as we we know that he has like at least some kind of training for random things, but that's like a pretty significant spy work thing to do. But he fails. I mean, least of all that he's an expert ballerina. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but uh, yeah, anyway, he, he does fail because they have the little, little food on the big table and <laughs> Rasputin is basically like, you're boring, get, fuck off, get, get your dad over here. <laughs> Don't want to yeah. rather talk to him. Uh Oh, and Rasputin says, am I, just, am I only make decisions when my stomach is full and my balls are empty? <laughs> well, I mean, you know, <laughs> if you've got the means, I guess that's, yeah. that's a criteria you can have before decision making. Make sure everything's consensual, even with the food. Even with the food. <laughs> uh, Pay for the food you eat, everybody. Don't steal food. Yeah. Uh, yeah. As I said, uh, Conrad fails, they have a little back and forth because he basically tells him that he's boring. And then, well, dad has to jump in, he makes him swap places. And the dad is like, Well, uh, it kind of sounds like you want to fuck my boy. <laughs> and then <laughs> Rasputin says, It kind of sounds like he wants to fuck me. <laughs> <laughs> that was pretty good. Yeah, it was pretty funny. It made me laugh. Um, But yeah, uh, Orlando tells him, oh, your reputation uh, spreads far and wide. And it's like, well, if, if that's true, you can put your leg on my uh, on my lap and I'm going to make it work again. It's like, not here. Yeah. It's like, yeah, no, somewhere private. And then they go to the room. <clears throat> and uh, yeah, this is where the magic happens, L literally. Quite literally, yeah. <laughs> we just, we gonna we gonna do some magic flames, uh, because he, he he not only it's like not magic. It's like hey, take your pants off, and it's like oh, is that a sweet cake? It's like yeah, 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 it's a sweet cake. Um, uh, I was trying to go through this. So Shola and and uh, Shola Shola and Orlando, uh, Conrad. Gee, why am I keep mixing up their names? What's wrong with me? Uh. They're just kind of waiting in front of the door and just kind of list, uh, eavesdropping, see what's going on. Uh, or hear what's going on, rather. Uh, yeah, he puts the, the lack on there. It's like, oh, you want to wanna have some of that cake? Like, oh, is that is that good cake? It's like, yeah, she's a she's pretty good cook. Pretty good. She can bake real nice. Uh, yeah, yeah. Sujin does, like, all these kind of weird things. He, he just, just, like, touches the leg, goes up there, and goes, like... Nuh, nuh. He does, and like, it's, like, some... Mongolian throat singing. Yeah. And it kind of also hypnotizes Orlando in, like, a weird yeah. way. Because he goes, like, and oh, God. Uh, uh. <laughs> and I was, like, yeah. what is happening? What is going yeah, no, on? This, this scene is very bizarre. <laughs> and to make it even weirder... And uh, he's like, oh, that's the cake. He has like, he has the blank leg of Orlando on his lap. And it's like, oh, this is a good cake. It's like, yeah. Yeah, well, I want to have some nutritious food in me. I need energy to get all this thing. And he takes like half the cake and just shoves it in his mouth. Yeah. Like, <laughs> like, You're thinking, man, I hope he takes a bite. You would be thrilled to see what he actually does. Yeah. <laughs> Let me see if it's just happening on screen. I'm going to show the people. Because it goes like this. Mmm, very good. And then... Very English. He's like, yes, it's very English. And then he goes like this. <laughs> <laughs> it's kind of, the face all that way is like, Ugh, what are you doing? Because he has like all the cake stuff in his beard. He's like, Ugh. yeah, yeah. He's a. Uh, it's he doesn't take any care to be neat about how no. he eats. And then it's, he does like as messy as you can imagine. Yeah, and then as I already said, he does like the weird Mongolian chan thingies, and uh, I don't even. It's like hard to explain. I wish I could just show the whole whole scene because it's really bizarre. Because then he starts like rubbing the wound. And then starts going like, licks yeah, like the wound. 
while Orlando goes like, ah, God, ah. It's like he's fingering his wound. It's fucking weird and kind of gross. Yeah, I don't it's, know. It's, it's very, very strange. This is this is a, this is a weird, weird scene. Because Rasputin even goes like, let me lick your wounds. And I was like, what the fuck is that? What am I watching? What's going on? This is... It was like, obviously, this isn't doing anything. Like, they have to intervene. Which, to be fair, Conrad wants to do it. So I was like, we're going to get in here. He's in trouble. And it's like, no, no, wait, wait. Sh- Shola says. It's like, okay, fine. And apparently, well, I can- think also because Shola's sort of expecting the poison to kick in pretty mm. quick. I-, I think that's why he told him to wait. Yeah, yeah. And it's like, oh, why are you. Re-? He also has like gets him to tell the truth he's like him completely hypnotized like he's like full hypnotized magic mode thing i don't he's he's not doing anything medical is what i'm trying to say he's do, doing all kinds of weird shenanigans and he's he's about to tell he's like oh what are you here it's like oh i'm told he's being influenced at sar i want to see him that's why uh, and it's like oh if you want to your leg fix you need to tell me the truth why why are you here and it's like, well, I'm here to kill you. Before he says kill you, Rasputin just goes like, and starts puking out yeah. the cake. <laughs> it's like, what the fuck is going on? <laughs> well, I mean, he did just eat a whole bunch of poison cake. Him vomiting is the yeah. least strange thing to have happened. It's a very, very neat uh, vomit, though. He goes like, I apologize, but your cake didn't, didn't agree with me. It's like, yeah. okay. <laughs> Uh, he was pretty polite about it. <laughs> yeah, and he's like, well, that's kind of sorted. Two minutes in this Russian cold water, and you should be good to go. And at this point, even I was like, wait, my, my leg is healed. He's like, yeah, it's healed. And that's it. That's it with his wound. It's just it's yeah, healed now. Yeah, he's never addressed again. Yeah, he's just fitful duties. The whole movie I was expecting, oh, the, the leg is going to be fucked again at some point, right? It's like, no, that's it's, it's healed. It's fine. That's, yeah, it's really weird. This is a weird scene. I don't know why we do this weird magic thing. He's, uh, I don't Well, I mean, I, huh? and it's why I said I think the biggest problem of the scene in the first place was the existence of the wound. Yeah. Because it's not really used in the movie at all. Like, he's not really ever prevented from doing something because of the leg in a way that we see. Like, we can infer it, I guess, and think that that's why he went into full pacifist mode, I'm never leaving the estate type deal. But, you know, it's like, we don't really, there's not really a purpose to have that the wound in the movie unless it's to have this scene. Mm-hmm. So it must have been, someone must have really been proud of the Rasputin pre-fight scene, because I actually think the fight itself is quite good. But the <laughs> everything that happens before it is like, you, you got to be at least buckled up a little bit for this ride. Otherwise, you're going to fall off. Yeah. Um, But yeah, he figures out that the, the keg was poisoned. He was like, oh, it smelled like almonds, just like cyanide. Uh, yeah, that's true, actually. Um, so it's so one thing we're warned about if we ever enter a, like a scene on any mm-hmm. mass call and the place smells like almonds, we've got to be very concerned and about cyanide uh, being a possibility and then leave. Get like hazmat teams to come yeah. in first. <laughs> I just want to have a little sniff and you're dead. Um, and yeah, uh, when Ola- uh, he's getting put in the water a little bit and he's like, ah, oh, you're going to kill me. And he's starting to drown Orlando. But Conrad and Shola come in, and Shola has his first fight scene. The actual first proper fight scene is happening right now. It's happening mm-hmm. right now. It's crazy. And this one is pretty fun. I like this one. I, I like the fight yeah. scene. It's pretty good. Uh, and the the expert ballerina aspect of uh, Rasputin's skill set uh, pays off here. Yeah. He does like basically like this, the, all these uh, twists and turns. and It looks like, ver- like a ver- very russian like dance in some parts as yeah, well like cossack dancing yeah I that's guess. the one exactly uh it's kind of fun it's just kind of creative and fun i don't i don't mind it i don't mind it at all uh there's a couple of things where shola swings in weird ways where it definitely doesn't connect that's something i noticed especially when he's on the table and starts jumping up and down he just kind of he's not even yeah. close enough to hit him even if he wouldn't be jumping at the time that's just something i noticed <laughs> uh but yeah, it's kind of kind of neat, like uh, putting in all this Cossack dance thing uh, with the fight. It's kind of fun. I, I enjoyed it. Well, also, I think this fight takes place in one room, so uh, yes. the 
the volume backgrounds don't aren't as uh, painfully apparent as they are in some of the other fight scenes in this mm. movie. The interior fights or darkness fights tend to be better. Right. Um. But yeah, he gets a little. He gets overwhelmed. Jola is, and he gets stabbed with the with the opium cross. <laughs> I guess we can call it. And now yeah. he's out, he's full out. of full of drugs. <laughs> He'll be fine as long as he, his lungs keep working. Right. Uh, Respiratory depression is something you have to work worry about with uh, opioid overdoses. We have a drug called Narcan that snaps them right out of it. Oh. But uh, the problem is then sometimes they get pissed that you wasted their drugs. <laughs> and uh, yeah, everyone, everyone's had an opiate addict take a swing at them once or twice. They right. don't move very fast, though. It's fine. Hmm. Uh, but yeah, he's about to finish off Shola, but uh, uh, Orlando grabs the gun he got earlier from, from his dad and... Uh, uh, Conrad, I did it again. What's wrong with me? He's on screen, and I call him the wrong name. <laughs> We're switching their names, everybody. No. Uh, yeah, he uses the gun and shoots the gun out of... Uh, the sh he uses the gun and shoots the sword that Rasputin picked up out of, out of his hand. There you go. I can't talk for shit today. Uh, but there's only one shot in there apparently, or the gun is fucked or something. I'm actually not entirely sure what happens. Uh, but yeah, he only gets one shot out, and he gets beat up a little bit. And uh, he tries to fight back, but Rasputin is kind of crazy and does like dry humps uh, Conrad, and some <laughs> sometimes <laughs> as well. He's he's fucking unhinged, is what he is. Yeah. yeah. And he's, he's actually a super villain who's absolutely insane. Yeah, and he also is like super strong. Like he he grabs Conrad on his neck and picks him up, basically. Yeah, super villain. Uh, he even like does like the one hand, uh, like grabbing the other hand and just overpowering the other guy. Uh, he's a he's a, he's a, he's a, he's very very strong. Uh, but now Con uh, Orlando, I did right this time. I almost didn't. <laughs> like oh my boy is about to get killed i guess i need to fight now even though i'm a pacifist because that's like the whole thing with him he's, he doesn't like to fight kill whatever yeah. uh but obviously he, he's gonna help his his boy and they do like a little tag team uh on him uh, i don't know Rasputin gets like stabbed twice uh, uh almost shot uh what else? He gets drowned here at the end uh, for a <laughs> while. He, he gets slashed in the arm. Like he, he takes a lot of hits, but he's like, I don't care. Also, he, he earlier points out after when he figures out that he got poison. It's like I take drugs for breakfast every day because he's just he's just full of drugs all the time. So implication is he, he's just he has an, almost an immunity to 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 poison or whatever. Yeah, it's like he's always poisoning himself. Yeah, so we basically we took every aspect of Rasputin and just cranked it up by a hundred and made him this crazy guy. It was kind of fun. I I I, I do enjoy it. I have to say. Uh, but he he's he's down there. He's drowned. But they're like, "Are you alright?" It's like, "Yeah, thanks for helping me, Dad." Oh, you got it. And then he he rises back up out of the water. <laughs> he's like, "I'm still alive," but then he gets shot in the head by by Poppy. Uh, mm -hmm. and then he's dead he's yeah like, and I, I I did look it up as we were recording and it was mm -hmm. a shot to the head that did ultimately kill Rasputin <laughs> well there you go that's kind of fun that's kind of fun um, I'm just checking right now I've, I've been calling it Poppy and I'm just thinking if it was actually Poppy or was Polly it was Polly I've been saying it wrong the whole Polly. time <laughs> uh, dumbass. Although Poppy actually would work for a World War One story, so it's what we wear on Remembrance Day. Oh, uh -huh, there you go. So it's a flower. <laughs> um. Hey, it's also what they make opium out of. So, <laughs> you know. Oh yeah. See, maybe Two maybe reasons. that's why I did it. Um, and yeah, Rasputin is dead, and uh, they they leave. They just leave. Apparently, that that was easy to do. I don't know. They don't show us how they left. They're just gone. They just left in the in the train. Yeah, next that, scene. Uh, especially with all the noise that was happening, getting out of there would be a much bigger problem than it was. Yep. Um. 
but yeah, pretty fun, uh, fun fight scene. Uh, and now you might also finally pick up on why I've been saying, or why we have been saying, this is a totally very weird movie. Because we just had this, well, Kingsman-like action scene that was pretty fun. It's just, I feel like the movie is confused. Like, are we going to do like a full war is bad kind of narrative or we want to be a fun Kingsman movie. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, they de they definitely did both or at least tried to do both. And I I just don't I just don't think they mesh together at all. <laughs> it's just so weird. No, nah, not super well. I don't think it's terrible though. Like I mean, I think that, like this is a movie that's still quite worth watching and oh. And, I don't know. I'm cool never gonna watch going to watch this one again, it, but... I'll be honest. Ah, <laughs> I've seen it twice. <laughs> wow, simp, bias. <laughs> I mean, yeah, fair enough. It's uh, like I... I, now I, I, Joe I, Pig. I, I, oh, I don't know, but I guess what, what I want to clarify, though, is that I agree with your criticisms, <laughs> and, and, and I, I still like it. So like, What? Yeah, That's I think not that allowed. It. You either uh, hate I mean... it, and you have to spit on it and don't like it ever if you agree with criticisms that's what the internet yeah, well, has been told me has taught yeah, me no, i think we can have both everybody we can, we can be honest about how good a movie Absolutely. is or is not and at the same time like it or, or dislike it listen i really I like batman that. and robin from back in the day but who boy that movie <laughs> and the the wife was saying that she wants to watch the two schumacher batman movies because she keeps hearing about them and i'm like well I was like, you, you might like them, kind of. <laughs> like, I mean, the, they're they're funny. They're yeah. definitely funny. So, and then I, I I told her about the Arnold Schwarzenegger Ice Age quote, and she couldn't believe me. <laughs> the Ice Age. <laughs> Who killed the dinosaurs? Who killed the, dinosaur? the Ice Age. The Ice Age. Oh, so good. So, so funny. Good. Love it. I love it. Ah, oh, good stuff. Good stuff. Um. Anyway, yeah, so he's been dealt with. We have a little cut to uh, <laughs> back to the to the evil man hut on the mountain uh, where he cuts off the horn of one of the goats because he's angry that Rasputin died. And he's like, he turns around and just Lennon sitting on the chair is like, you need to start your revolution right now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's like, what's... See, this is so funny. This is really funny. This is the parts that I enjoyed this movie. Yeah, and, and like that—that's the other thing that's kind of neat because sometimes the super serious stuff they kind of give you a little joke almost. Yeah, because we just we just you just survive for like a little wholesome scene with the dad. And I was like, I want you to pick up my Rasputin failed. <laughs> <laughs> I don't care about your politics. I need you to start your revolution. <laughs> I think like what's funny about that is you get the impression that. He he had argued with him about communism. <laughs> like, he was like, "Yeah, okay, fuck it, do the communism." Yeah, just do the communism. <laughs> I need to rush out of the war. Just do whatever. Oh, this. Oh, we, <laughs> I just realized while I see this on screen, we <laughs> we get the we get the Hitler bait right here. <laughs> Because I'll be a power on the left, but you will have a problem finding my equal to balance from the right. <laughs> yeah, it's like, oh, no, don't worry. We'll have one of those in history. Uh, this is probably the funniest uh, mid credit scene ever. Where they introduce Adolf Hitler. It's yeah. so funny. I lo it's, it's, I, it made me really laugh pretty, pretty good. And I, I think if they made the World War II Kingsman movie, it could be pretty good still. It could be funny. I, I would maybe, I would maybe work a little bit harder on it than, <laughs> than some of the things that happen in both Golden Circle and this movie. But oh, yeah. it, uh, I think the biggest problem now, though, is I think like they're just not making that much money. So yeah. Maybe if the Kingsman three, that I think is the next one that's being made, is going to be another like sequel, mm -hmm. does well, then the prequel sequel will have a chance. But who knows? Maybe. Probably not. <laughs> Um, let's see. But yeah, he starts this thing, uh, and then we have another conversation. Oh yeah, it's 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 Conrad's birthday. It's like happy birthday to you. Blah, blah, blah. And it's like yay birthday. Have some champagne. It's like whoa, finally we can see eye to eye. So you, I, we just killed the the guy. Like I'm cool now, right? I'm gonna go to war now, right? You, I have your blessing. And it's like uh, no. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> 
He's like, no, no. <laughs> we're, we just were doing this mission. No more missions. Stop it. Yeah. And he's like, oh, and I have my new leg now. See, I can use it. I was like, stop telling me. It's weird. <laughs> you got healed by magic. It's, it feels like worth looking into. It's like, what? where did you learn that? It's like, oh, maybe we we'll would have learned yeah, that I technique. Mean, it's like, well, hey, Seems pretty maybe, good. Yeah. <laughs> it's like maybe modern medicine's been getting everything wrong. and We should have just learned the weird Rasputin yeah. wound licking thing. Maybe Russia wasn't so bad after all. Maybe we should talk to him. Yeah. See if they, they got all the, <laughs> all the crazy voodoo magic to heal shit. Um, but yeah, uh, doing this, right. Uh, yeah, he wants to still want to join the war efforts. He's like, no, you, you've just exceeded your, your, the duty to your country. Like we, we, we did it. Like we, we're cool. We don't even need to do the war stuff anymore. It's like a big step. We just did to not immediately get annihilated by everybody. And Connor's like, I just want a blessing from you. It's like, that's the one thing I can't give you, I'm afraid. Obviously, because of all, all of the wife thing and whatnot. <clears throat> uh, but yeah, uh, I, I'm, I'm just wondering. I wonder if the, da if the dad could have just done a better job convincing him instead of just being like, I can't do that. Like, because yeah. he could have probably been like, yo, you saw like this crazy network we have, right? We could do all kinds of crazy shit without you going to actual war, you know? Uh, yeah, and having someone that knows how this stuff works and can take it over when I'm gone will be more helpful to everybody than yeah, than you being an infantier on, or like a grenadier on on the front lines of World War One. Yeah, we have all this, all these networks. We can do work down there. If shit goes goes south, we can still go there ourselves. Uh, and I'll still I can still have an eye on you and have a little bit of my hand over you, but you st you can you can do stuff. But also we don't get that one because we could have we could have had a pretty neat back and forth between the two here. Where it's like yeah, but I want the action because still the whole thing is World War One. Everybody's hyped to go to war because they want to defend their country and obviously in all the uh, in all the I guess advertisement for war they're like hyping it up. It's like oh this is like really good. You get like. Uh, we take care of you, and I think you got paid pretty well for for, for the time uh, as well. When you when you go to war, like we're taken care of if you survived, I guess. Uh, so yeah, everyone was like hyped to go. I mean, again, go watch like nothing uh, in uh, the, the the all quiet on the Western Front. Uh, just shows it very very well how how all the war efforts have been fueled with all these young soldiers and how that even turned out and what actually happens when you go to war uh it's like a whole thing you could go in more but this is it's like a thing i feel if you want to do like this the uh the, the the narrative of like the war is bad in like a meaningful way like they try to do here in some parts and it's not even like awful anything but I feel like if you want to go that way, I feel like you want to focus on that part, like, specifically. Yeah, make it make it the whole movie. Yeah. Especially if you could do, like, a Kingsman movie with, like, this crazy Rasputin villain and all these over-the-top leaders. It's like, oh, but my arm is kind of flumed up. Haha, -ha, fuck the Russians. It's like, it's, like, the silly and the, the tragic here just doesn't mesh well at all. And it's just it's kind of daring. Yeah. Yeah, I think that's fair. Yeah. Um, but yeah, no, uh, Conrad is, is going to war. We just see him go enlist, basically. And uh, Orlando is sitting alone on the table. Uh, and we just see a bit of a montage, basically, uh, because Conrad uh, enlists uh, to the military. He gets, like, basic training and all that, all that stuff. And in the same... Uh, at the same time, uh, the Germans send out uh, a thing, a cipher, uh, like a fully uh, encrypted uh, message to someone somewhere with like the biggest encryption they have. And uh, everyone is trying to de decipher it and the network of nannies uh, and whatnot, assistants, uh, they got all the info they can uh, to Polly in order for her to start uh, cracking the code. <clears throat> and she's having like all this trouble. 
Uh, it's not entirely clear how long this takes. Do you, do you know by chance how long like the basic training was back then for like war efforts? It couldn't be that uh, long, probably like a month probably, or two. Probably, yeah, I'm gonna guess they would probably shorten it down to a month. Yeah, because you can do it. You you can, especially because you probably won't be focusing all that much on on things like you know how how do you properly polish your boots and stuff. Right, you know? like, right. They're probably just gonna be like, hey, here's how you hold one of these weapons. Here's basic drills so that you can do your parades and ceremonies when they need to happen. And all right, three week field exercise, and then let's get you out there. Yeah. We'll see your uniforms in a week back here. <clears throat> Pretty uh, much. Yeah. And that, that's, that's just a little, uh, the back and forth. Uh, Conrad actually comes back one more time to get his, uh, his military. Uh, is it like a festive suit? What would you call those? The, the ones that you don't wear the feet? What? Ceremonials. Ceremonial. Okay. Uh, does like a little picture and uh, gives it to the dad. And well, he's done with basic training and Polly has deciphered the code because she got <clears throat> one more very important clue from, uh, I guess, the, the the nanny in Germany where he she hears that, oh, is that one a, a Z or an R or whatever it was? And that was like probably the one that uh, tipped off what is going on. Uh, and it seems like the idea of the Germans there was uh, things. I don't even know if that's true. I didn't fact check that. But considering how close to real life this uh, this has been this whole time, I, I wonder if that was the thing. I don't know if you remember by 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 heart. I don't. I'm sorry. But the the idea is that they send a, a encrypted message to Mexico for them to invade the USA, so they can't join the war efforts because they're going to be busy uh, on that war on that front. Basically, uh, the the idea yeah uh and now that they know this they can send this to the usa and it's like you have it black and white they're gonna do some shenanigans now you have to enter the war and when you do that the, it's basically gg for germany <laughs> mm -hmm. lots of guns in the old america oh yeah uh <laughs> but the usa is basically like that sounds ridiculous i'm not i'm not entering shit <laughs> That's basically yeah. the idea. It's like, oh. Yeah, oh, they, okay. they really make Woodrow Wilson sound like kind of a dick. <laughs> <laughs> no, I won't go into war. Fuck that. That sounds ridiculous. Even the Germans wouldn't be that stupid. <laughs> something something <laughs> that he says. Um, and yeah, the, he, uh, the, 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 the boo. Orlando talks to King George. like, oh, that's crazy. Thank you. You, you saved so many lives. Uh, you know what? L let me take care of your son. He's just going to go pencil pushing. He's not even going to go to to the front. Uh, I'm going to make sure of that. And it's kind of interesting because uh, Con uh, Orlando's like, I don't know, man. That seems kind of... I don't like that, actually. Yeah. That's kind of... Mm, he's going to be pissed about that. But uh, King George is basically like, come on, let me at least do this one thing. Like, it's just, let me save this one child. I'm like, okay, I'll, I'll do that. Yeah, and I mean, from both King George's perspective and Orlando's, it... It would be very difficult for either of them to think that was anything other than the nicest thing to do. Yeah. You know? Um, and yeah, you say oh, I, I, I think actually, oh, you know, ahead. honestly, I think it might have worked too had they presented the orders to him differently. Yeah, maybe. This is, it's kind of weird because he arrives like, hey, I'm uh, Lieutenant Oxford reporting for duty. He's like, oh. Oxford, yeah, you can go back home. <laughs> I was like, what? Was like, lucky. and then I think the guy says to him, like, it must be, it must be like pay to be friends with the king or something like that. And like, I think that's what pisses Conrad off more than anything. Yeah, because he says, oh, fortune favors the brave, or whoever is under the king's gaze. I think. Hang on, I think I have it here. Yeah, fortune yeah, favors maybe the brave, would... or those under the king's gaze. Yeah. If he yeah, wouldn't have said then, that, he would probably like, oh, well, probably wouldn't even realize that was. Uh... Well, I mean, it's one of those things that like you could see that coming from another soldier to be a massive insult. Like, especially if you were mm -hmm. if you were about to go off and go to war with people, and it's like, well, looks like it looks like the king likes you, so good. To, like, congratulations, you're the one of us that gets to live. Like, it, it could. 
that that could be tough like honestly especially especially if any of the people you were training with end up dying which in world war one was shockingly likely that could curse you with like a mean case of survivor's guilt for the rest of your life mm -hmm. like, if you're like man i should have been there with what if i could have saved them like <laughs> it would be it would be really tough yeah absolutely um, so i'm saying that even conrad is like acting within the realm of understandable it's like yeah mm -hmm. as much as it's probably not a good idea to be like well forget you king i'm gonna i'm gonna go over your head and do this anyways i almost get why he did yeah it was like the mindset back uh, back in the day because he, he also got like the the white feather which apparently was like a sign for a coward it's like here you, you didn't yeah. you don't go to war have a feather or something um so he, it was like a, a little social pressure that comes with it, I guess, as well. It's like, oh, you didn't go to war? Cringe. You know? Yeah, seriously. It's like, oh, well, all, all of the handsome men in my class did, so maybe I'll go talk to one of them instead. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you see, like, man, this is going to fuck me up with girls for like a little while at least. Mm -hmm. Until people forget about this whole war thing. <laughs> years. Damn it. I need another war so it can get late. <laughs> oh, no sequel. <laughs> Damn it. Um, um, but yeah, when he finds that out, he finds a lance corporal, uh, Archie Reed. Uh, and I guess he's pulling rank is, uh, I think uh, is what I, what I'm getting, uh, getting here. Kind of, kind of. Yeah. I mean, uh, realistically Reed shouldn't have obeyed this order Yeah, because it's, it's unlawful. Technically like you can't, you cannot order someone to impersonate you and switch positions with you in, in a military. Like that's, that is not the, uh, it's not the level of authority that any, any like, you know, junior officer would have. Mm -hmm. But I think because like, I mean, obviously a lot of these people are pretty new to the military he might have just been thinking, well, I mean, if if a lieutenant told me that I need to I need to switch places with him and go deliver a message to its father, and as a matter of like national security, and mm -hmm. I mean, I guess like, he's he outranks me, so I'm, I, I suppose I'm listening to this guy. And what I mean, do, they don't have like barcodes or NFC chips or anything like that, so you know, yeah. it could be pretty easy to impersonate another another person in like an era of that level of technology unless um unless you're recognized by someone who knew that person physically yep which we'll get to oh yeah um so yeah he swapped places with archie so he can go to the front lines uh and fight and now we just have like 20 minutes of a completely different movie <laughs> for i yeah, feel like yeah. uh, probably a better one <laughs> yeah yeah kind of <laughs> It feels like the payoff of this feels like the end of an act, like another like a different movie, uh, mm -hmm. you can do completely, because so basically what happens he he went to the front lines with him he uh, wrote a letter a letter to his dad which Archie is uh, delivering to him personally, played by Aaron Taylor Johnson who was kick ass and uh, also might be our next James Bond I hear yeah well there you go. Uh. Yeah, is uh oh god, I just got scared. I thought I forgot to put on the copyright back uh, back on. <laughs> that would have been annoying. Uh, that's fine. Um, but yeah, he's he's going to the front. Uh, he's he's there's like a runner coming up, and they're like, oh, give him cover. And they all yeah, shoot, yeah. but he doesn't make it. He gets blown up, and it's like, oh well, mm -hmm. that sucks. Well, amputation too. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, uh, because uh, soon after we learn, it's like, oh, this guy, he was a spy. Uh, he has like very vital information and we need it. And we need a, a volunteer party to go outside at night into the no man's land and uh, retrieve the package thing, whatever it is. Um, and Conrad's the first person to step forward. Yeah, he's like, I'm in. And no one else is, so uh, they choose some more volunteers. <laughs> in, in the military, we call that being voluntold. Voluntold, that's good. I haven't yeah. heard that one before. <laughs> voluntold. Well, yeah. it's like, it, like you'll, you'll often have someone say, "Okay, we need three people to go out and do this thing." Some like three of you volunteer. You're getting voluntold. Yeah. And like at that point, you like you know that if you volunteer, you're at least scoring some points with your boss. Yeah. Like, so it is the kind of thing. It's like, yeah, okay, I'll be the guy who does it this time, and then. 
then when people say hey you never volunteer for anything you can be like oh, excuse me yes i do <laughs> yes i do Ac actually I think, <laughs> I, I think if it's go into no man's land though like you'd be you'd be forgiven for wanting to be voluntold and not yeah not volunteer that's a that's a, you don't want to be between two war zones or war borders trenches whatever you want to call them that's a that's a bad place to be because you're getting shot at by both sides <laughs> Because there's quite a lot of space in between those trenches, so they can't immediately tell what's going on. So as soon as they've seen something move in the no man's lands, they're going to fuck you up. Yeah, you can see one end from the other, but it's not its not apparent how far it is. And we're, we're probably talking at least like 500 meters, so mm -hmm. like half a kilometer maybe. I don't know. Quarter of a mile, I think. I don't, I don't think in miles. I, me neither. <laughs> okay. Four football fields or five. Uh, that doesn't mean anything to me. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> Kilometers and meters. No, the metric system is nice. Oh, I think uh, whether it's American or European football, it's still 100 meters. Okay. Cool, 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 cool. Uh, I'll make sure to n don't n never remember that because I'm stupid. Uh, but yeah, they have to go outside and retrieve that package, uh, and we get a quite cool fight scene in the dark, uh, because they're not yeah. the only ones here. They they sneak out and they see that there's also some German soldiers, uh, and who they are probably going to kill that guy. Kill that guy, retrieve the package back. Uh, exactly, uh, and they uh, they all realize, okay, if we actually use our guns here, uh, we're just gonna get shredded, like all of us. Mm -hmm. so without talking they have like this understanding it's like we're gonna put down their weapons and we're just gonna fight by hand yeah and i think that <clears> it's <throat> really well done because none of them speak either they just all <laughs> they, like they kind of sign it to each other which eliminates the language barrier too because yeah. like you know they're, they're speaking german and it's english on the other side and uh, it, it's the thing that I said they just tried to do the same thing in Argyle with the the oil skating fight mm -hmm. where they they understand that they can't use their guns in there. So they put them all down. Right. And I was like, yeah, I was like, Matthew Vaughn's done that before in a, a much better scene. <laughs> and it's, yep. uh, it's this one I was referring to. Ah, OK. I, see, I, yeah. I, I think it, at the very least, I think this is the best scene in this movie. Yeah, I enjoyed I, this. I, I enjoyed this one quite a bit. It's uh. It's one of those, if you don't ever watch this movie, you should watch the No Man's Land fight on YouTube or something. <laughs> yeah, it's, uh, it's, 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 it's quite nice. It's very tense as well, because they, they make some sounds in between, and you, they like, cut to the trench, they're like, what was that? Or, what's about us? See, I can both make both noises because they're speaking. Yeah, German. there you go. <laughs> That's the one time in my life that actually comes in handy. <laughs> I mean, here, maybe we'll keep a tally on however many times during the show you speaking German comes in handy, and it just, it has one point now. Hooray! That's probably it, Just though. try to remember for the next <laughs> time. That's going to be the challenge. If we get to two, then we're going to keep the tally going. I know Oh, it. my God. <clears throat> uh, but, yeah, they're just kind of killing killing each other. The one German guy has, like, a a thing that, that you use for a hook normally, but he has, like, a spike on it. I don't even know if that's, like, a real weapon they used back then. Uh, sometimes, I don't even know. I mean, I guess, like, if you got enough time in trench... <laughs> you can make or... yourself some crazy weapon now. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, like, I mean, you got... You, yeah, you're not, you're not running over to the other side of the battlefield every day. You're spending a lot of time in that trench. And, hey, if you got some tools, you got some scrap metal, you know, make yourself some melee weapons. Why not? Yeah. But, yeah, he just starts uh, racking up some kills. There's one guy with a big hammer he uh, that he uses, uh, which I guess is just a construction hammer normally that an engineer uses and, for yeah. all kinds of shenanigans yeah just a sledgehammer <laughs> uh yeah uh conrad gets like three or four kills but he's getting overwhelmed by by the big guy uh and obviously the guy who was asking volunteers he's here with them and he's currently fighting someone uh and i guess he was uh, so impressed by him he actually uses his gun to shoot the guy to save him uh and obviously, the gunshot immediately triggers both sides on the trenches to use their machine guns to just absolutely destroy everything they see. Yeah. Because immediately and, when, uh, when they hear a shot, all the flares go up, everything lights up, and uh, yeah, he, he's got to run. <laughs> he's got to run. 
Well, I, I think maybe he did that because he wasn't sure that he'd be able to take on the dude that was about to kill Conrad. So he's like, yeah, well, you got to kill this guy either way. So either I can take the shot and then probably die and maybe Conrad will be able to complete the mission. So mm -hmm. I, I think the guy saw it as him giving the mission its best chance. But I, I mean, I think, though, again, like he and also knowing Conrad was the one who volunteered. So he's mm -hmm. like. This, this kid's the one who didn't have to be here. If one right. of us is going to have a chance out of this, it should be him. Yeah. Quite a nifty scene. I, I, I like it. I like it. Uh, and then he he runs towards uh, like a crater. Uh, uh, he's just having a bit of a breakdown because, yeah, well, he's in war and he just killed a couple of people. And it's quite scary. Mm -hmm. This is again where we have like this total, this total thing happening. It's like, oh, this is like quite serious right now. Like, what's what's happening? Was was I watching this? Didn't we fight Rasputin like twenty minutes ago? <laughs> what's going on? Yeah, yeah, we did. <laughs> it's um, yeah, the the movie has definitely embraced the seriousness of war. <laughs> yeah. Not even like in an awful way. Like it's 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 quite all right. I don't yeah, I don't no, mind at a all. A lot a lot of pathos comes with it, and like you you do really feel for the characters in this scene. Like um. I'm pretty much all sides, honestly, because, you know, everyone was kind of dealt the same hand there. Yeah, because uh, the crater is the crater where the uh, where the spy man got blown up and he's in there with only one leg. Uh, and, well, I'm not going to be walking anytime soon. I got this thing. He's kind of uh, <clears throat> consoling him as well. Is that the right word? Consoling? Cons is that? Yeah, yeah. Comforting yeah. him. Comforting. That's probably the one I was looking for. Man, I'm I'm specifically good with words today, uh, and yeah, he's just kind of comforting him, uh, calming him down, uh, and Conrad real uh, realizes like, man, my dad was right. Like this sucks ass. Like this sucks. <laughs> uh, it's like it's not fair. It's like yeah, you're right. It's not fair. But you know what? I need you to finish this mission. I need you to get this to high command. Uh, because with this, the war is basically going to be over. Because th th this is the, like the the actual message that has been handwritten, mm -hmm. uh, that has been ciphered and sent to the uh, to Mexico. And if they have like the handwritten one, then the USA has to do the thing. And uh, yeah, yeah, because they 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 have physical evidence as opposed to just taking someone's word for it that that message is what was sent. Mm -hmm. And the guy down there is like, well, I'm not going to be walking anywhere soon because, well, I'm missing a whole leg. Uh, I'm the, the, well, I'm going to be here. Uh, you're going to go to the mission. And Connor's like, uh-uh, I'm going to carry you all the way. And I'm not sure why you waited until it got daytime again. You probably had a better better chance at nighttime. In the dark, yeah. I don't I know. I think the cut was a bit too fast. I think while they had a little bit of conversation, we probably should have had the sunrise already coming up yeah, a bit. Yeah, dawn breaking. Yeah. That would have been a bit better, I think. Uh, it's just kind of a weird cut. Like, why did you wait for day? That's that's the, the opposite of what you want to do. But anyway, uh, he grabs him. He uh, carries him all the way there. Although, wait, I was, you know what? We could get the impression that he was just, it was taking him so long to get over there that day broke between the cuts. Like, once he started moving versus when we see it be daytime. Uh, or is it I mean, daytime when he's picking him up? No, they're, they're we down there, yeah, and then we cut immediately to him uh, coming up. Uh, and it's, it's, it's daytime when they cut? Yeah. Yeah, so, I mean, I think he might have been traveling for a bit. At the same time, because like, I mean, you might, you probably have to put that guy down a couple times as you're carrying him. Otherwise, I mean, it looks like it he's coming way. out of the crater here. Oh, really? Huh. Yeah, I mean, he, he. I might have to watch it again. I mean, he comes the, the the way he arrives in the scene. He just comes up. It looks like he come is coming out of the crater. Hmm. Uh, but then again, the, the yeah, trench then is, that does make it seem like he waited until daytime, and that is dumb. Because it's not, there's not that much space in between those that it would take him hours and hours to get from one trench to the other, and he didn't go from, he's not even all the way to the trenches. I, I don't know, it's a bit, <laughs> it's a bit uh, weird. <clears throat> uh, Sorry, people talking. That's all right. Uh, but yeah, now he's a runner like the one earlier. They, he almost makes it, but then big boom explosion. He falls into the trenches. Uh, 
uh, and unfortunately the uh, the other guy took the whole blast and he dies on impact or even before that. Yeah, I, I love that the guy says, fucking hell, mate, if that's not worth a VC, I don't know what is. Yeah, he's quite <laughs> happy. He's like, oh, what's your name? Oh, I'm, I'm Archie Reed. And then I, I don't know what I'm gonna, what I think about it, this scene. It seems... Yeah, I, I wasn't mm. crazy about it. <laughs> it was like, oh, then this other fella comes here. Oh, Lance Corporal, eh? Dark Platoon, 1st Battalion. He's like, uh, yeah, uh-huh. Oh, is that your best Scottish accent? It's like, oh wait, I can explain. Then he holds up the thing that that he took from the spy, and it's like a German emblem yeah. on it. And it's like fucking spy, and he shoots him right in the head. Yeah, and I um, I, the, I I don't mind its function in the story, like for plot reasons, as far as like having Conrad die in World War One, but it being because of mistaken identity. Yeah, I think he should have just died as, as the runner. Maybe even save the other guy, like the uh, the the guy that lost his leg. Yeah, like dying like a like a even like a double hero. Even this seems like a weird choice to me. It's like, oh, you I, do. I suppose the only way I can think that it that their thought process must have been is that if if he dies because of the mistaken identity, then King George pulling him out of combat was the thing that got him killed. Mm. Because if it, maybe if he was in his own unit and just like working as a junior officer instead of as like an enlisted frontline grenadier, mm -hmm. <laughs> like that um, that he might have had a better chance. So it being because that it was just a, a mistaken identity in that he did steal an identity, but the person didn't realize the reasons he did it and thought that he might have just been a German guy who killed his friend mm. and is now trying to retrieve evidence as opposed to send it off to the Americans, you know? Yeah. Um, that, that doesn't make it better than if they uh, i think it would have been better if he died in the 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 run with the casualty yeah, i think it would have made a lot of sense uh, but yeah so now we go back to the present because uh he's here to deliver archie is here to deliver the message that uh he is indeed dead already uh when this message arrives and of course uh that was lando very sad and uh He's looking up. He's holding like the picture of his son, and then looking up at the uh, uh, at the the painting of his wife and everything. And so it's quite sad. It's quite sad. It is. That is. And we yeah, see and you're kind of wondering where the movie's going at this point because you're like, wow, I can sort of thought he was going to be the king's man, as it were. I was and, at this point 100 percent sure they're just fucking with us. He's going to be back 100. percent There's no way <laughs> he just shot him in the fucking head. There's no. Mm -mm. <laughs> But no, that's that's he's still he's out of the, he's, still, he's killed he's dead. Yeah, I mean it was a bullet to the head. I believed it. <laughs> I was just wondering if if uh, if he was doing like another special mission and then he had to pretend like he's dead or something. I, I don't know, like some shenanigans, and then he comes well, back. No, no, like, no, Pedro uh -huh. Pascal is gonna show up with the eye gel. <laughs> like the... Unironically, was, that's, the gel. I I the the first, that's the first thing I thought. That's the nano gel, nano gel. Yeah, that's the first thing I thought of when I was like, oh man, if this would have been not a prequel, this wouldn't be a problem at all. <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, it, it was during World War One, that's for sure. Yeah. Uh, boy. Um, let's see. Oh, yeah, they have like a, uh, a eulogy going on. Uh, Basically, he has like this whole uh, speech while looking at King George, like, "Oh, it's actually not that sweet and cool to die for your country because it's actually really sad." Uh, that's basically yeah. the gist of it. <clears throat> um, let me see, where was I? Um, uh, Orlando is, I almost just called him Ray Fiennes. Uh, or <laughs> Orlando is uh, depressed in his um, study, as it were. Oh, yeah, but in, in between, we also see Lenin's done the revolution. Yay, we did it. <laughs> oh, yeah. Hooray, communism's prevailed. Communism. It's never um. been tried, though, everybody. <laughs> this is never, real communism has never been tried. Uh,. Yeah, Shola tells uh, tells Orlando that he succeeded where they failed, uh, 
because now America has to join the war. Obviously, they still won't because we still have one more thing to do. So they actually join the war. Uh, let me see. Uh, oh, yeah, we go back to the shepherd, uh, the, the, the evil Scotsman. Which is Morton, I guess I could just call him that. I already said that. that that's yeah. Him. Uh, if anyone even remembers him, he was the. They throw you off with a wig, though, because uh, the yeah. the Scotsman who's the leader of the Shadow Organization has a shaved head very clearly, mm -hmm. and and Morton has a full head of hair. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, but it's a wig, so he doesn't. Then we set up the, uh, the pistol sword ex machina or something, even though it doesn't really machina anything, so that didn't make any sense. They, they, he has like a duel with swords on top of the mountain with some of his people, uh, assistant guys. I don't know. We don't see him. He has like a face mask on because they have like the, uh, the fencing gear on. Mm -hmm. uh, and the German uh, guy, I think he was the hound or something. He's like, oh, I'm sorry, I'm fucked up. Uh, we're gonna have to finish to figure something else out. And I was like, oh, don't worry, we get Mata here to uh, do her magic in the American embassy. And then he shoots the guy he was fencing with because he has a gun in his uh, in his sword. Yeah, he's he's got like a like a rapier, and there's a, a derringer sort of built <clears throat> into the grip of it. <clears throat> it's like a gun blade from Final Fantasy VIII. Yeah. Uh, Except it actually shoots a bullet. It doesn't just make the sword more powerful. <laughs> it's not uh, hitting R1 at the right time, like in Final Fantasy, where you yeah. just go shoot, shoot, shoot. Yeah, you know, that, that, was, always, that was always the trick. <laughs> <laughs> and it sucks that uh, I actually found out that there does not appear to be a way to modify that PS1 Final Fantasy game to get it running above like uh, above 15 fps in its battles because that's oh. what the frame rate during battle is but um yeah i've got final fantasy 9 running at, at 90 fps Ooh. on my steam deck and it looks amazing nice. and i was like oh man i love to play final fantasy 8 looked it up no mods for that apparently the game's like the frame rates coded into the timing of certain things so maybe nah. it's it is things like the gunblade right and right. Uh, apparently that makes it like impossible <laughs> for them to to increase the frame rate of it, it makes me sad. Well, schnitzel. See, there you go, everybody. We talked about video games. Video games. Hooray. Uh, but yeah, obviously, uh, as you already said, Orlando is now in his uh, sad, depressed, drunk state. Because, of course, uh, now basically his whole family is dead. Uh, he has, like, a beard and everything. Uh, yeah, he's very understandably drinking right oh, now. Oh, yeah. <laughs> He's like, you want some tea, your grace? He's like, uh, scotch time, 24 hours a day. <laughs> Something yeah, like that. It's been scotch time for <laughs> for four months straight. <laughs> um, but King George is here. I do, like, oh, I, I do like the payoff, though. The payoff of her offering him tea, I think, was, was pretty strong. Oh, yeah, it was kind of fun. Uh, but King George is here. It's like, well... The USA is still hesitant and Russia has left the war, meaning we're, well, we're facing imminent destruction uh, because that's it's all the bad. And he also brought a Victorian cross for Conrad because he knew his duty, unlike you, you little sad drunk. That's not what he said. I'm just being mean. Yeah, well, he does <laughs> kind of imply it. He's like, yeah, well, your son earned this, by the way. Yeah. Uh, and then Polybase is like, well, you. this is not only about you, and you better get your shit together, and uh, I'm, I'm going to resign, and also I'm going to kiss you. Sorry, my lady. But she looks at the picture. Yeah. <laughs> I <laughs> thought that was okay. <laughs> kiss it. Well, uh, I mean, like, at this point, she's been living with him for, like, what, 20 years? Yeah. Or, like, or like 15? And, I mean, yeah, at a certain point, like, your, your wife's been gone a long time, man. Oh, yeah, Gemma yeah. yeah. Gemma Arden is right here. He's right here, man. But I like how he's just like, make me some tea. <laughs> <laughs> a strong tea. Yeah. <clears throat> um, and yeah, and then they, uh, I just decided, well, I guess I have to, have to do some work now so we don't, don't just all get killed. Uh, and they go down to their little headquarter basement 
And it's like, well, we followed your last sober order and we uh, planted peeps uh, everywhere in the U.S. Embassy because that's where we haven't had any yet. And, uh, well, they should just check out the embassy at, uh, what was it, like 3, <laughs> three o'clock unannounced and uh, see what they can do. Yeah, and they um, they informed them that uh, he the president's uh, finger uh, president has been wrapped around the finger of a uh, Norwegian woman. Was it? <clears throat> uh, yeah, it's, where it's, is she supposed to be from? I think she's supposed to be like. I'm like uh, actually not sure. Right? Actually, probably yeah, something like that. Uh, but yeah, she, I didn't they, think they, she was another German or Russian, right? But she's always no. she was always next to the the German guy, the hound. Oh yeah, I guess so, that's true. Maybe she was German. Maybe she's another German lady. Um, but yeah, she gets restrained pretty quickly by by Orlando. And this is not even a fight; it's just a yeah, a quick grab, and it's done. So, um, and yeah, they they uh, the ambassador is here. It's like, well, you better tell me uh, everything, and no one is gonna be hurt. That's the idea. And yeah, they they have something to blackmail the president because he had to has he has had the sexy times with this lady, but she was filming it. Ah, oh, that slut! <laughs> president of the United States starred in one of the first pornographic films ever made. Wow, what a what a what a trendsetter! What a trendsetter! Yeah. W W. Woodrow Wilson. Um. And they also get uh, a hint because they have this uh, this cashmere scarf, which the other guy uh, that killed uh, Ferdinand <clears throat> also have. It's like, well, hey, Taylor man, let me know where this is from. It's like, well, they're very rare, and they only grow. They only get the sheep, uh, Camaliro. Kamaliro, whatever you call it. It's the big mountain where all the goats live, and yeah. that's where the Kashmir is from, and that's how they figure out uh, where to go. Reasonably speaking, you'd figure that if you run a shadow organization like that, that would be the not what you'd want to do. Although, I mean, I guess what are the odds of, like, secret agent Taylors existing in that time? But, but I mean, not, like, I guess it would trace you there, but also if it was an impossible garment to get unless you are part of the shadow organization, mm -hmm. I guess maybe maybe it would be a good thing to have just in case you're ever, you ever have to go dark and then find a safe house somewhere, you just show them your scarf. I'll give them that. It's touch. less subtle than a tattoo made out of gold. <laughs> yes. Yes. That's going to connect sure. everybody. Um, God, that was stupid, wasn't it? Uh, yeah, that was pretty dumb. <laughs> Uh, and yeah, we basically just cut immediately to them being there. They're just hiding oh, out. Shit, in and a... Poppy, Poppy was the villain in Golden Circle. That's probably why we were thinking Poppy earlier. Oh, it's, uh, right. Julianne Moore's uh, character. Yeah, good point. I, good I point. just put that together when I thought about the gold tattoo. <clears throat> I was like, yeah, well, I mean, that was only there to show that Poppy was a psychopath. And I was like, oh shit, there's the Poppy. Yeah, uh... Polly is Gemma Arterton's character. Polly, mm. everybody. Uh, yeah, they're hiding a little cheese hut, basically, <laughs> and uh, looking at the elevator that goes up to the mountain, and they have to, uh, well, they have to control it, is, is the idea. And it's like, well, I can fly the plane up there. Uh, I need you, Shola, to jump out of the thing, and uh, Polly, <laughs> we're gonna look out for, uh, we're gonna have to, I don't know, do the rest. A but device has been invented to jump out of a plane safely. <laughs> it's called a parachute. <laughs> oh, how exciting. Uh, so I would do anything for you. I will not jump out of a plane for no. you. <laughs> <laughs> like, that's insane, sir. Uh, and then Polly is like, well, you don't need to land a plane. You just need to jump out of it. So we're sacrificing a plane to I mean, yeah. get on top of the thing. I mean, well, one plane to stop a war. You know, you got to think, like, if you got the king's backing, it's like, yeah, I blew up a plane for this. Like, he would be like, all oh, right. I mean, I, I'd do it. <laughs> I'd sacrifice a plane, sure. Why not? Uh, so, yeah, he just kind of makes his, his course. He flies towards it, gets on the wings. Uh, obviously, it doesn't go super well because he... Uh, oh, the, the, uh, the rope... Uh, disconnects 
and just kind of turns to the right and he gets stuck in the wing because those wings are just made out of like some fabric or something and then he has to cut through it and kind of gets gets out of it and then he just kind of spins around he deploys the parachute and uh gets stuck on the one piece of wood on the side of the <laughs> of the mountain i think uh yeah he's, uh, i was really lucky uh, and then crashes into the wall and is unconscious for an amount of time. I don't know why. Uh, I mean, I guess if you if you hit a, a rock face from jumping out of a plane, I, yeah, I think losing oh, yeah. consciousness for a bit is pretty reasonable. <laughs> no, the, the reason I say an amount of time is... The, 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 it's not clear, yeah. The, the, an amount of time because he just... The, the, there was a crash of a plane here somewhere close and somehow no one here is alerted by anything i feel like there should be some alarms going or people looking around but they're all just chilling yeah i guess that's fair yeah puppies uh but yeah he wakes back up he makes a makeshift uh climbing gear in one of his shoes with a knife or a dagger i should say Knife, n knife is fine. I don't know why I made it's that. Kind of similar to where the um, the <clears throat> Kingsman knife comes out of. Yeah, yeah. Like, anyway, so yeah, I don't know. I thought that was kind of a neat little nod to the other movies. Mm -hmm. It's like here's where they got the idea for that piece of kit. <laughs> uh, but that doesn't work because the knife breaks, uh, and he has to kind of cut himself off. And uh, well, <laughs> he's not only really lucky that there was this piece of wood he got stuck on. There's also this specific formation of rocks where he can just uh make himself long and just kind of climb up there uh yeah it's like a less elegant splinter cell move where instead of doing the splits you've got like your back up against the rock face and your legs up against the other rock face he's yeah. like climbing up a little <clears throat> rock shaft essentially but so, because he sees the billy goats do it yeah i'm just trying to show it on sc screen here so this is where he ended up. There's this one piece of wood here that sticks out. He got stuck on. That's about to break. And he also landed next to this thing uh, where he can just kind of do this climbing like the goat does. So he's a lucky boy, Orlando. He's a very lucky man. When uh, in Scotland, do as the goats do. <laughs> yeah. God, I wish they would just put a couple of more of those tree trunks wood thingies on the side there's like nothing else there. It's the only one <laughs> uh whatever um but yeah it's very help he has to climb up there and that's what he does i was gonna fast forward and then he sees all the goats because like all these mountain goats that can like stand on these very steep uh surfaces or sides which I still find super impressive to this day. That is like a real thing they do. It's like, you guys, these goats are crazy, man. Uh, and then he kind of lets himself getting uh, uh, dragged up by the goat that has only one horn because he gets bonked but in the head by it. And then just kind of grabs it. And obviously the goat goes back and he kind of drags him up with that. And he makes friends with the goats. I wonder if that's going to come in handy. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I mean, yeah. Always make friends with animals. Absolutely. Yeah. Unless they're about to kill you, then you should probably yeah, and then else. run, run away, or or make yourself big. One or the other. Wait, is, is it a black bear or a brown bear? I I don't know. <laughs> oh wait, never run away. Either play dead or make yourself big. If it's a black bear, make yourself big. If it's a brown bear, just play dead and hope that it doesn't doesn't notice you. Because if you run, it'll it'll catch you. <laughs> They are faster than you. Don't run. Yeah. <laughs> they are much faster than you. <laughs> um, they climb better, too, so don't don't think, oh, I can climb that tree, though. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's like, yeah, it's not going to work either. Bears are insane predators. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, he's now up here. Uh, of course, the idea is he has to fire a flare to signal the other ones that they have to do something. Uh, he sees that the the evil Scottishman Morton he is he's in here he's talking to some other guys like get this thing out there to the press so the USA won't do anything because they'll be busy with taking care of that I guess and uh, yeah he gets noticed uh, by.
by the guys. Shooting is happening. He has to fight the big end with the big end boss man, who is the <laughs> cliche big boy who doesn't feel any pain until you kill him for good. <laughs> He's a very large man that has very strong. Um, he managed to start the flare. And there's all kinds of shooting is happening. Polly is giving <clears throat> support with a sniper rifle while Shola is running towards the other guys, starting to slice him up while they're getting picked off one by one by Polly. And they're all yeah. kind of have to take cover. Finally, it's, it's a finally, finally, uh, he's a, it's a, it's a, it's a fine setup to actually get Shola close to them. Like, cover fire he gets close to them he can slice them yeah uh, i like when they put in the work to make it kind of reasonable well also i mean her marksmanship was shown at the very beginning of the movie yes. like it was already established uh, she's like got crazy good aim <laughs> like it's... yeah now she has like something with an actual scope so she's gonna be shooting good um but at some point they reveal oh no they have a big machine gun so it's, she has to take cover and she's getting cheesed on <laughs> i guess you could say all the cheese getting shot and she has like all this cheese goo on her um in the meantime orlando's still fighting the guy upstairs he's getting yeeted around uh at the meantime the guy who has the 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 film that they want to release is in the middle of going down the elevator but he gets stopped because the guy stopped the elevator because orlando walked in here uh He's getting peppered with like swords and everything. He's getting beat up. And uh, yeah, in the meantime, downstairs, they're killing all the people that are guarding the elevator. Uh, Orlando's hanging around. Uh, Polly shoots the rope of the elevator. Like this, like the rope uh, on the stone as the counterweight. She shoots that. Mm -hmm. Well, Shola grabs onto it. He just gets flung up with the thing uh, so he can uh save orlando the german uh, I, I think it was a german guy who was supposed to uh get the film to whoever he just get it gets squished he just has an impact on the floor and he's done so yeah uh show like it's comes flying in cuts off the head of the big guy uh, it's just all kinds of crazy action happening right now yeah yeah that <clears> seems <throat> fun <coughs> oh god <coughs> it's jober <coughs> uh but yeah, they have the film. They technically have their their mission is done. But nope, the evil man is still there. The the th the guy with the threats in his hands. We need to stop him. So they storm out, kill all the guys up here. They have a big old tag team ha action happening. Shola's happy. Orlando's back. Like yay, good to be back. Woo -hoo. And then they go inside and have a bit of a shootout with the Scotsman. I'm just going through this because it's just all action, basically. There's nothing. Yeah, it's just, yeah. Uh... There, there's not a whole lot we can offer insight on uh, <laughs> other than just, yeah, this is fun, fun action. It's very King's Mini. Yeah, King's Mini, fun action. Lots, uh... lots of acrobatics, lots of interesting cinematography. I, I hate any time there's a wide shot outside because I, I think the green screen in this movie is not good. No, <laughs> and, it's not uh... great. Yeah, they're very much not on the top of a mountain. No. <laughs> as cool as that would be, but uh, yeah. But yeah, it's just all kinds of over-the-top action. They go inside, they have to fight the, the, the Scotsman. He has like a big uh, machine gun as well. The one with like this t uh, this weird top uh, circle magazine. I forgot the name of the weapon. I think it's a <laughs> it's a well-known, very unreliable weapon in World War One. I, I think. <laughs> uh, if I remember correctly. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, he's, he's shooting them. They all go around. They shoot back and forth until everybody's out of ammo. And they have to do... Well, I was about to say fisticuffs, but they do a sword duel. They do a duel. Uh, uh, let's settle this like a gentleman. This is also where we get the reveal that this Morton is like, you've been mean to the Scots, so we destroy all of England. Uh, and then they show a couple of scenes. It's like, ha, huh, see, that was him. He did the stuff. Uh... And then they well they do a one v one, but obviously he has the shooty sword. He's just yeah the gun blade. <laughs> he has the gun blade. He's gonna hit R one at the right time. But Shola m notices and he jumps in front of him and catches the bullet with his shoulder. And well, yeah they they they, they have a sword fight, which is also pretty mm -hmm. good. I think it's very it's pretty fun. 
Yeah, yeah. Pretty and well. most of it's in most of it's inside too. So it's, yeah. Uh, it also is one of the fight scenes that looks better. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, for sure. Um, but yeah, they just have a sword fight. Uh, pretty fun. Nothing really to complain. It's it looks nice. Uh, I couldn't really tell anything that's like super broken with the fight. Uh. Yeah, it's very intense too. Like yes. they, they both seem like they're really trying to kill each other. <laughs> uh, but then the sword fighting stops, and uh, Martin gets his drawer grenade and throws it <laughs> at Orlando, and he protects himself with a very flimsy-looking shield, and he gets yeah. heated through the wall. That's okay. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> yeah. So, okay. Yeah, wood wood only will crack your back open if it if it's intended to in most movies. Uh, that's fine. But I, every time it happens, I'm just like, oh yeah, that person's so fucked. Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah. I just want to mention the shield is fine. It took the whole blast of the grenade, no problem. Uh, yeah. But I'm saying that like even if any even if everything in front of the shield was not a problem at all, his back flying through oh, yeah. the wall of the barn to the point that it breaks the wood like in two spots, yeah. so it lets him fly through. It's like wow, that's a lot of impact, man. Like, mm -hmm. You just broke every single one of your ribs at the back. <laughs> not if you're the main protagonist. No, yeah. you're not. But yeah, they fight a bit more outside. Uh, should be a city, shitty green screen. Uh, Obviously, they fight all the way to the edge of the mountain, and Morton is about to, ah, you're about to get killed, but he gets stabbed in the leg by the goat with only one horn. Ah, don't be cruel to animals, guys. They're gonna fuck you up. Angus had his revenge. Yeah. And, well, he punches him in the face, and he's, like, on the, on the, the edge of a cliff. Four balls on the edge of a cliff. There's a little EFAP meme for you. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> and he's holding him on his scarf, very strong scarf, because it's high quality cashmere. Cashmere, it's the thing. And he's like, ah, you're a pacifist. You're not going to kill me. It's like, I right, I shouldn't, but I've become the man that my son would have been. And he uses the the the, the Victorian the cross Victoria of his son cross, yeah. and just cuts the the scarf, and he yeah. just. Let's him fall to his death. He's gonna scrunch into the floor, and it's, they actually show it. It's kind of a nasty impact. Yeah, like, <laughs> looks very fake though. Uh, yeah, a lot of the stuff in this yeah. movie does. It's uh, it's clear that this movie did not quite have the budget of the first two. Right. Uh, or even the first one, because the second one starts to go a little crazy. <laughs> mm. But uh. <laughs> that it was like a, a couple of funny lines. It was like, "Oh, Shola, you're right. So you're gonna jump in front of a bullet for me, but not that of a plane." It's like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, "Yeah, look, I, I can, I can, I can contemplate a bullet." It's like the the idea of jumping out of a plane of my own free will. It's, yeah, and I they, don't know, man. <laughs> and then Orlando also asks, like, "Okay, so how are we gonna get down from here?" <laughs> because they broke the elevator, of course. Yeah. <laughs> <clears throat> Uh, well, hopefully, I guess, hope yeah, that's the, we just assume that that question has an answer, but <laughs> maybe there's like a really long ladder, uh, on the side, yeah. like in Metal Gear Solid 3. A little, little like emergency fire pole where you can just slide down, <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, then we see that the the president of the USA he gets some cookies, but now the film is hidden in there, and he's like, Get the military, we're going to war, <laughs> yeah. It's like, oh, well, wait, my sex tape is back? Okay, uh, let's go to war, gentlemen. Let's go to war. <laughs> and then we just cut to a victory. Yay, we did it. Uh, yeah, meanwhile, meanwhile, like the Canadian soldiers are like, yeah, cool. We've been here for four years. <laughs> <laughs> you pricks. <laughs> it's fine. Though. We're happy you showed up, America. Uh, yeah, but then we see that... Uh, no, well, the Tsar got killed. The other one has been abducted, of course. Uh, not abdu abducted, uh, uh, abdicated. That's the word I was looking for. Um, and King Drew's like, well, thanks. That didn't happen to me. That was That's cool. Uh, it's like, well, how do we make sure that nothing else like this is going to happen again? It's like, well, come to the tailor shop at 3 o'clock. And this is where they form the Kingsmen. Yeah. yeah. Kingsman Agency. 
and he's gonna be like, huh, my code name will be uh, Arthur, and you're gonna be Lancelot. I think they have uh, Archie Reed in here as well, right? If yeah, I Archie correctly. Reed is Archie Reed is Lancelot, and that's because he used to call Conrad Lancelot. Yeah, because they exactly. they do a little King Arthur thing at the beginning, and um, yeah, then Polly becomes Galahad, and mm -hmm. um, yeah, so, uh, Sola becomes Merlin. Oh Sol shit, I'm stupid. Sol I didn't realize that was Polly. I was yeah. wondering who's that random lady. It's like, of course, she just has a different haircut. Yeah, of course. Yeah. I'm yeah, like, yeah. No, that's Polly. <laughs> yeah, <I'm> stupid. <laughs> uh, and uh, she's given the the Galahad code name, which yeah. is both both Eggsy and Harry's. Yeah, King George becomes Percival, uh, and Shola is Merlin, who will be her mm -hmm. quartermaster. And then they have a toast to the people who died, like they did before and that's that's the movie that that's it but wait we got a mid credit scene <laughs> <laughs> there is one more mid credit scene <laughs> one more I, I may oh that's two that's two <laughs> <laughs> because uh we have the one german guy still here he's just kind of taking over the uh as the shepherd i guess is the idea it's like well then we need a counterbalance to your power so and I might have one here. <laughs> and we have this guy coming in. It's like, oh, hello, my shepherd. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, this young man will come to rival your position in this world, my friend. <laughs> and his name it's an honor. is Adolf. <laughs> <laughs> and your name? Adolf Hitler. <laughs> yeah. dun, dun, dun. <laughs> it's just such a, it's such a funny thing to reveal Adolf Hitler <laughs> like yeah, in a I movie mean, like this. Like, in like, a post credit scene too. <laughs> I, mean, I actually I thought it was I thought it was pretty witty. It's the funniest <laughs> fucking end, uh, end credit like, scene what, I've ever what seen. What do we have here? Oh shit, Hitler! Oh my god! <laughs> Everyone in the, the cinema goes like, Yeah, go, <laughs> let's go. <laughs> <laughs> because I mean, ultimately, it's kind of the reaction we all had because we're like, "Oh shit, are they setting up World War Two for like another?" <laughs> but at the same time, it's like, "Yeah, well, well yeah, World War Two get, does get set up by, by what happened in World War One, actually." So, you know, it's it's fun to chuckle at it while also yeah. knowing that it's not very funny. <laughs> like it's, it is, it is real history. But keep, I mean, I don't know. I think that that's that just the keep... value in sometimes having a movie where you do play with history with kind mm -hmm. of a more fun tone, which I guess is why the, the, the more serious thing makes it more uncomfortable yeah. than, <laughs> because in comparison, you're like, well, if it's that tone with the people dying in war being mm. that horrific, then should this be fun? But I don't well, know. I they, the were, they were just yes, key jangling at the Germans. So every German was like, I saw Hitler and clapped. <laughs> <laughs> oh God. <laughs> That's a quote you could. That's something you can clip me on. I saw Hitler <laughs> and I clapped. <laughs> that's, oh my god! I'm gonna not reiterate it. I'll I'll leave that yeah. one with you. <laughs> <laughs> well, if you clipped it, uh, you can put that in my Discord channel because when this goes up, uh, that that uh, that that you've already heard about uh, that, that 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 Discord being live. So you will find a link down there, by the way. But yeah. Um, just so uh, you know that. But uh, whatever. Uh, but yeah, this was Kingsman. I think it's better than the second one, uh, to be honest. I the agree. second one was yeah. such a mess. Uh, this one has more things that I enjoyed, for sure. Uh, the, this one, at times, has an uncomfortable level of stakes, whereas the, the Kingsman yeah. Golden Circle kind of... It, I, it, I don't know. It was weird with its stakes, because it kills everybody right at the beginning of the movie, but then mm. from there on out, no one can die. Right. And obviously we have like this whole world war movie plot happen, not plot, like the world war stuff happening. It's like, look how horrific war is, but also look at Rasputin doing his little dance fight. It's like, what is, what are we, I'm confused. I don't know what to feel right now. Yeah. And uh, the, the emotions will likely be mixed because yeah. it is a fun, silly action movie, but it is also a pretty dark and poignant war it, movie at times <laughs> it doesn't do itself any favors by having 40 minutes of preamble i think they should have tightened that up quite a bit uh yeah i think that's probably right because i, guess I, I mean, remember being really intrigued by it all when i first watched it and mm -hmm. um but it was also what it made x-ray girl be like okay i don't i don't know about this movie because yeah. i have no idea what's going on and i think that it might have been just because like i 
I, I, I find military history fascinating, but I was kind of oh, on the yeah, edge of my sure. speed being like, how are we going to do, how are they going to do this? But uh, yeah, I could see that being the thing that on a rewatch would be harder to get through because you're just like, okay, I get it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh uh, boy. But yeah, that's, that's, that's that one. I mean, I don't really have anything else to add, to be honest. I think that's, we, we did it. Uh, it's going to be fun if they make made one with world war Two just to see what they do maybe they make adolf hitler tap dance in a shower or something i don't know <laughs> i mean you know well i mean i think at the very least they're probably going to make him seem just ridiculous and that that yeah. would probably be the way to do it mm-hmm. like <clears throat> kind of make him a clown in the movie but i think you'd still i don't know you'd want him to be intimidating at times though oh yeah you I just mean, want if, him to if have he plays the quirks if he plays through the role uh, for the shepherds like we, we, you're gonna get the intense uh hitler of the real life can't believe we've been talking well, about yeah, it was, so it's it's <laughs> it's daniel Bruhl, right who's like is the um the newly elected shepherd the the guy for uh, like uh, yeah daniel Bruhl. Bruhl. see yeah, oh that's yeah. the third german thing i said today god damn yeah there you go i just said Bruhl because that's uh that's yeah, probably how i would pronounce that word in there's english an umlaut <laughs> on there so there okay go. a Bruhl. <laughs> so <laughs> <there's>, you gotta, <laughs> You rolled the U, you weird people. <laughs> right. Cool, but no, that's cool, okay. cool. He's um he's a good actor though, and I think that yep. he would he would serve as a decent antagonist. He I was a decent antagonist in Civil War. Like not not the upcoming movie, hmm. um the the Marvel Civil War. Oh. He's uh what's his name? Uh, Zemo. Oh, right, right, right. <clears throat> yeah. That's like, correct. I like, I you're right. I remember the right. actor's name. I'm not remembering the character's name now. <laughs> <laughs> that happens. That happens. Uh, but yeah, that there you go. A little Hitler talk for your Easter enjoyment. I hope that was good. Uh, yeah, there were parts of this film in Germany. Everybody. Yes, I'm always in Germany. Yeah, it's crazy. I'm in Canada most of the time. Sweet. Um, actually, I'm not gonna. I'm not going to be in Germany when this airs, so I'm going to be yeah, in Austria. Go. I'm going to be looking for Hitler in Austria. <laughs> well, from when this airs, it'll be two weeks until I'm in Vegas. So if, oh. you, if you're in the the Americas and you, you, you enjoy the YouTubers in our general sphere, there's going to be a bunch of them there. Well, they, don't uh, try to murder us, please. That's yeah, don't I do have. that. We don't like that part. The murder part, not a fan. Hanging out, pretty cool. Yeah, I'll hang um, out and talk to you. You can even call me retarded. I don't Whoa. Mind. Now I'm sold. <laughs> uh, hey, I mean, you know, it's a good thing about about not embracing the fact that you're a handicapped man. <laughs> handicapped man. <laughs> you you like... get to say that word and people are at least a little uncomfortable about telling you that you can't. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, boy. Well, there you have it. That's that's I guess we can wrap it up uh, unless you have anything to add. I yeah, I mean, just overall, I think that it, um, it, I think that the moral that I kind of went over at the beginning of the, or sort of midstream, where uh, the idea of some battles being worth fighting, being mm. a, being a more valorous or more, sorry, a more heroic virtue than abstaining from war entirely and pretending that everybody can just get along right. when, when circumstances will lead you to war, no matter, no matter how much you want to pretend that it won't. And I, and I thought that this movie painted that well because it it's sort of thing, at least that if you're, I don't know, a, a male especially, but even women now, because I, I don't know if there's conscription for women anywhere in the world, but I don't think there is in the States. But anyways, um, age like 18 to 50, essentially, you are in a situation where like, if a world war breaks out, we're like, the human existence lies in the balance mm. you probably will get conscripted to fight yeah and n- knowing that about military service that some battles are actually worth fighting and will save more lives than if you don't fight those battles and then and i think that this movie painted that in a way that was intriguing and very comic booky and sometimes mm-hmm. very very emotionally stimulating and maybe in some ways that created dissonance. But overall, I thought that the idea behind the story was pretty good. And I also thought that it was kind of a, 
a good dad story in a way too but like mm. the idea of a father just doing everything he possibly can to to be a good father and to to make good on his promise to his wife but ultimately failing even though it, it like it, it was out of his control because i mean you're the son will grow up the son will eventually find himself at fighting age and if it happens to be one of the world wars going on when that's happening, yeah. then you're not going to be able to just protect him from all that. You can't ever make the promise to a son, never let my son see war. You know, because it's as much as your mom could promise that to you, that sweetie, you're never, ever going to see war. It's not going to be her choice. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so um, also yeah, it's the old, a, the age old thing. If you, fo if you forbid something to someone, enough times it's gonna get even more juicy over time yeah. it's gonna gonna be that thing that's out of reach that i really want to do and damn it i'd be able to do if my parents just didn't didn't stop me yeah but yeah I, don't don't go to war voluntarily if you can avoid it though everybody yeah. some of you though if it's like hey something that you know that you're gonna be incredible at and you've got the drive to like be a career soldier then Go for it, and maybe you're the guy that's supposed to be doing those doing those covert missions that, oh. that stop the wars before they happen. You maybe, know? maybe you're, you're gonna be the next Kingsman. Kingsman, yeah, basically, but the real life <laughs> version of it, which is trust me, way less fun. <laughs> <laughs> that's probably like Navy SEALs or something, because they have like this super crazy yeah, training. Yeah, like, I mean, and I mean, I've never even been in like a, a special ops course or anything like that. But yeah, uh, yeah no, it's just a, <laughs> yeah, real real military stuff. Uh, there, there's a lot of shitty aspects of it that they don't mm. really show you in movies that uh you, you start to realize just how much of your time is going to be spent doing that stuff that it, it might make you think twice but <laughs> yeah. not for the reasons you'd think more than like oh shit i'm actually going to be bored a whole lot <laughs> <laughs> i mean that's like in, in wars it's like one of the biggest problems like boredom oh yeah like it, yeah i between mean the uh, fights, I that's true right? Well, because it's it's horrifying, especially yeah. when you know that any moment, it, like a firefight could break out or your base could get bombed, like the yep. base that you're sleeping in and that is about the size of, I don't know, two normal house properties. So like not some of the like like forward operating bases are pretty tiny. So if 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 a battle happens at one of them, yeah, everybody's in trouble and everybody has to get up and start fighting right away. So as much as you might feel bored and safe, you're also terrified constantly. Yeah. But uh, yeah, no. So, but yeah, I I think though that this this movie I th I think showed both sides of that coin when it very easily could have been trying to be super anti-war and been cringe about it while also like being an action movie and mm -hmm. therefore being super hypocritical. Whereas I think that it, as much as I don't love the circumstances of how he died, I think Conrad dying during the war was kind of essential for that to work. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, and, uh, and I mean, I guess the other thing that if you are thinking like, oh, maybe I could be a real Kingsman and you're, you're thinking I'm using you as a recruiting tool, know that there's a solid chance you're going to die and that that's a responsibility you have to accept. So it's kind of the, the, uh, the well, ah, I'm referring to our, our episode on Starship Troopers there, Rash X whole, mm. you know, like being able to decide for yourself is the, the one true, true choice that a person ever has and that, that sort of deal when it comes to military service, I think is extremely important because, you know, you, you are signing your death warrant in a lot of ways. It's just, you got to hope that it never gets served. <laughs> yeah. Well, I think that uh, settles that. God, I should stop talking altogether. That wraps this up. I, I, I would, uh -huh. I would guess, uh, well, I, if, if you, if you just chilling here, happy Easter, I guess. Uh, hope you're having some yeah. neat, nice food or whatever. Uh, we'll be back next week with something. I, I don't know what's happening right now in my brain, but we'll be back with things and, uh, yeah, yeah. I think we have we have one episode between this one and Civil War, the the other Civil War, not the Marvel Civil War. Right, 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 <laughs> right. Yeah, we're gonna be checking that out for sure. See what what's up with that stuff. Look kind of cringe from the trailer. So yeah, I feel like it's gonna be it's probably gonna be bad. Know, might be worth <laughs> picking apart. Yeah, we'll see. If not, we'll do something else. Uh, but yeah, we'll see you uh, all. The next time, uh, unless you got anything else going on, you want to tell the lovely people out in the world. 
I, I'm probably either playing Helldivers 2 or Dragon's Dogma 2 at this point in history. But I, I don't like know yet because well. I'm, I'm speaking in the past for the future. Oh, my God. Now, that's that's some Russ Putin shit right there. Anyway, we're out of here. Have a lovely evening, day, Bye -bye. thing, whatever. Goodbye. Mm -hmm.